Welcome, welcome, welcome to Boxing Fans Talk TV. I'm your host, TDT. You can refer to me as Miss T. Y'all see the thumbnail? Keith Thurman and Errol Spence Jr. are mirror images of themselves. And I put up a picture and I said, a picture says a thousand words. But before we get into that, y'all know the drill. Let's turn to Welcome back to Boxing Fans Talk TV. As I said before, I'm your host, TDT. You can refer to me as Miss T. And um, I want to say, I send a shout out to Pound for Pound Sports Entertainment. He said, yep. <laughs> out to my thumbnail. Welcome to the Building King. Uh, Y'all know at the top of the hour, we talk about water and the importance of water. And I always say water check, water check. And I'll be honest with you guys. As far how I'm doing per day on my water intake. Today wasn't a good day. I've only drank six bottles. That means 48 ounces. But you best believe before I go to sleep tonight, I'm going to try to take in more water. I might not reach my goal, but I'm going to keep trying. And that's the thing I want you guys to know. Whenever you uh, misstep or fail or you feel like you fail at something that you're trying to do. Okay, take it in. It's not the end of the world. Just get back up on the horse. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Water drinking, sports, you know, school, you know, hanging with folks, you know, whatever. Get back on the horse. And anywho, so 48 ounces a day, I got a lot of water to make up. The two times, if you're not a water drinker that you should drink, it's first day in the morning. Before your toes hit the ground, before you even brush your teeth, drink about eight ounces of water because the body is like an engine. It needs lube, and the water is the lube, and you get things moving. Second time, that night before you go to sleep, not when you're laying in the bed looking at TV, not when you're doing other things, you know what I'm saying, but when you're about to go to your deep sleep. Drink you eight ounces of water. The Heart Association says it's good for your heart. They're not lying. That's, it's really, really good for your heart. A lot of reads going on at night when you go to sleep. You're revamping, rebooting, recharging. You're doing a lot of things. Cleaning out your system. The water helps move all of that. That's why you need to drink at least in the morning or at night if you're not going to be a water drinker. But I advocate that you drink plenty of water. Here at Boxing Fans Talk TV, we advocate for 100 ounces of water. Uh, we know that a gallon is cool. A gallon is 128 ounces. I don't care how much you weigh because the formula is half your body weight in ounces of water intake. 
But, you know, who the hell is going to drink 200 <laughs> ounces of water? Nobody. So I always advocate for 100 ounces of water at least. You're going to be surprised that it changes your life for the better. You're going to be surprised that whatever you're trying to do to find your health and get, get healthy or whatever is going to help it. You know, it can increase it by like as much as 50% just doing that. So please, please, please drink your water. Tay is in the building. What's popping, King? He said, Keith said the same shit Earl did and got backlash. Earl did did it and his fans defend him. That's what we're going to get into, Tay. Tay said, there are two main differences between Keith and the fans. Ain't don't uh, like it when I say it. <laughs> I hear you, King. But let me cook for a minute. Give me about five minutes or whatever. I'm going to drop the link after that. So there's a lot of similarities to Keith Thurman. And I know some people are going to be like, hey, what you talking about? There are similarities. They're both fighters. They're boxers. Check. Uh, they're both welterweights. Check. They've both been at welterweight pretty much their whole career. And suffice to say, it would not be a stretch for someone to assume that they're going to spend the majority of their career at welterweight. And Earl is recent recently have talked about moving up and all that stuff we'll we'll have to see it to believe it uh just like anybody else we'll have to see it to believe it. i said that for terrence too if terrence gonna move up to 154 we have to see it to believe it but this is what these gentlemen say they're gonna do now in recent times and i've dated all the way back to when american and Kell Brook fought their fight you know both of the guys have come to an epiphany and it was like hey you know what Let's stop doing shit in public. Let's let's do it behind closed doors. Okay. And so that's what they've been doing. And you get a lot of rumors and a lot of people coming out saying that uh this, that, and the other. And that's what they are. They're rumors or they just straight up lies. And I don't know why you guys fall for it. I I I can't tell you how <laughs> why you think it's true. Because first and foremost, any any channel out there. Or any fan out there that has talked disparagingly about Terrence Crawford, what we do know, and we can judge this, is that Terrence Crawford is not going to endear himself to you. He's not going to ingratiate himself to your presence. So you're not going to get no information when it comes to Terrence Crawford. You're not going to get an interview. You're not going to get a call. You don't have his number on speed dial. He's going to ignore you just like he's been ignoring you. I don't say that as a hit against somebody. I'm just saying we have to we have to go by what we see. Terrence Crawford is not going to talk to people who always have something disparagingly to say about him. And that's a nice way to say it. But, you know, all the name calling and, and talking bad about him is not going to get you an interview or even time in his presence. Maybe you don't care about that. I'm not saying that you do. But I'm just looking at reality. He's not going to do it. Hell, I'm, I'm Team Crawford over here. He's not doing it for me. I don't mind, though. It's not something he have to do or supposed to do. I don't care if any other fighters ever talk to me. I can ask and I can try and they can say no. But it don't matter. It's not going to change my opinion about them. Because I'm not expecting anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the sport that I love. I'm reading between the lines. I read a lot of articles. I come to you and try to tell you how I see things. I'm giving you my perspective. That's all I'm doing. And other folks are giving their perspective. But we could do without the propaganda, the hyperbole, and the lies. We can do without them. Mr. Golden is in the building with Poppy King. He said, hello, my queen. I know it's been a minute, but how you, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, Mr. Golden. So let's talk about their similarities. Like I just mentioned, they're both fighters, but they're both welterweights. They've both been in the same division for a long time. Um, Earl Spence is fighting Keith Thurman's leftovers. Keith Thurman was the man at one point in time. He was. And how did we know about Earl Spence? Because Keith was begging years ago for a fight with with none other than the GOAT himself, uh, Mayweather. And Floyd, you know, he was at a point in his career where he felt like he could pick who he wanted to fight. 
he can coast it out. You can't blame Floyd. What more accolades or what more anything did you want Floyd to do? I think at the end of your career, <laughs> it's your kiss goodbye. You do it the way you want to do it. That's why I don't agree with doing that type of activity in the beginning part of your career, like how I see Tank. Love Tank to death, but I think he was moved. I, th I think he put the cart before the horse, and he's sacrificing his youth by not going out for these legacy fights. As I said before, I always thought the Tank could clear out the 130 division, the 135, and 140. I thought he could do it, and I wish that he had because he would have solidified himself in the record books. And in the end of the day, I understand that these are young men that we're talking about. But for all of us who've been their age, but they've never been our age, we have a different perspective. I can, I've can i been 27. Tank has never been my age. And I can tell you right now, I don't care what discipline you put in hard work in, whether it's school, your job, or whatever, you're going to want some, some legacy. You're going to want to leave your, your mark behind. And you can't do that if in the beginning of your career, all you're doing is strategically fighting folks uh, for the money. And, and I'm not saying Tank only, you know, they only picking people he know he can beat. But most of Tank fights when you, it's not him, you know, it's how he's been moved. But most of his fights, you already know he's going to win. So Tank do a lot of things good. He don't put down his, his opponents. Earl does that before the fight. You should do that after the fight. Because you really can't speak intelligently about a fighter and how they are or good or not until after you fight them, right? You don't have the experience. So when Earl was putting down Sean Porter, what was that about? You never fought Sean Porter until you did. Now, after you fight him, if you want to say those things, see, like I said, they, you know, there's a lot that they can learn by looking at Floyd Mayweather. Y'all say what y'all want about Floyd, but Floyd never put down a fighter. So when he did fight, a lot of people thought this would be the one. This is going to be the one that beats Floyd, this, that, and the other. So I think a lot of these fighters got to learn that, especially Earl Spence. You're old enough to know that because when you're putting them down before the fight, why should we buy the fight? You can make a fan say, why should we look at it? You're not giving us, there's no excitement there. You take away the excitement. I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking from a business point of view, for the fighter's sake. For even if I say Earl does it, then I'm thinking for his sake. Don't put down your fighters before you fight them. You know, I, I talk about Earl's character, how he's cliquish, and, you know, how he alludes to things and drop innuendos, and his fans pick it up and run with it. They do. And I always say, attitude reflects leadership. And I'm going to show you guys something. This is an old video. It's not mine. I do not own uh, the rights to this video. Um, and I just, I just want to um, play it. But I do. Let me put my banner up. YouTube. I do not own the rights. This for educational purposes only. Because I want to show you guys where I get what I say from now this date notice the date the date is september pull it up september 9th it's up there this date is september 9th uh hold on <laughs> it was up there okay i don't know if you guys can see it but it's, it's right under the title the date is september 9th um, and up until that date, I have looked in the back, you know, all these days, all these weeks, I have been looking in the background to see did Terrence Crawford make a public appearance and do the same thing that Earl is doing here. Now they both in the same weight class. So shit talking, I don't have a problem with that. And I, and I always, I don't really have a problem with this, but the problem I have is folks acting like they didn't see this. And when people say that Earl instigates shit, he started shit, and Terrence did this and that, and they act like none of this, this stuff was available. So the two things that, that I'm going to I'm play a snippet of it, YouTube, I don't own it, 
But I want y'all to glean something out of it. Let me see if you do. I ain't even going to say it. I'm going to say it after I play it. But here we go. That's supposed to be your dude. Catch me wild. It's, 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 it's all facts. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. So, I mean, like I said, he's on the wrong side of the street. That's why he's calling out. Who's he calling out? Who's he calling out? All right, hang guys, right? You heard that. He's on the wrong side of the street. Who's he calling out? Who's he calling out? Al Heyman guys, ain't he? Isn't he talking about himself, Sean Porter, and Danny Garcia? Because those were the top guys at the time, September 9th, 2018. Here we go. All right. How you going to get that fight when he just signed with ESPN? I'm not going to ESPN at all. I'm not going to ESPN. Now, he didn't say it like, I can't go. Maybe we could work something out. But they can partnership and put a fight on because we know that they can. They've done it with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and others. But he's saying it like emphatically, like, I'm not going to go to ESPN. Here we go. At all. For the big money fights and the fights that is really going to get made and the fights I'm really going to make is it with Showtime and Fox Sports. And Fox. And y'all remember, Fox Sports. I showed a video on this. Uh, uh, Terrence Crawford is signed with Fox Sports, and I get so tired of people acting like, well, it, it wasn't good enough that he was signed with Bob. You need to get away from Bob. He gets away from Bob. He's a free agent. He, he ain't got a network. He ain't got a network. Can people please, please throw that out there? <laughs> the boy got a network. Partnership in any other name is ownership. It don't mean you own 50% or 40%. Nobody knows what the percentages are. But partnership and ownership is pretty much interchangeable. So don't take our word for it. Take Bally Sports word for it. Don't take our word for it that Bally Sports will be the new name of Fox Sports. You can look that shit up on Google. Terrence Crawford is in partnership with them. So anybody who says, he don't have a network. Y'all got to miss me with that. Because he do. We've shown you proof. I've shown you proof. Other channels have shown you proof. I just reiterated the, the proof and showed it to you. Easy Google. That's the fight that we made. You tell me, oh, I, I got three million guaranteed. All right. You see 1.5 on paper, right? That's cool. Man, you're talking too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right. That's cool. Errol, Errol, thank That's you. cool. Bo Mac can say what he wants. That's cool. I'm A side. I'm A side. Like I said, Terry Cobb got to come across the street. Damn. <laughs> That's all I wanted to show. <laughs> that shit is funny to me. And the arrogance of it all, the propaganda of it all. Y'all heard it out his, his own mouth. I'm A side. Y'all heard him say it. I'm A side. You know, on that date, that date, that Earl Spence had one belt, that was the IBF. And you know, on that date, that date, Terrence Crawford had one belt, the WBO. Now, it don't matter how you, me, or anybody feel about these belts. They are legitimately they are the belts. They are legitimately the sanctioned body belts. If you want to be undisputed, you have to get a WBO belt. If you want to be undisputed, you have to get an IBF belt. That's what these two gentlemen had on that date. But so they even Steven, right? Not quite. Because Earl Spence accolades amounted to the IBF belt. Whereas Terrence Crawford accolades in his career amounted to lineal champion twice, uh, ring magazine twice, undisputed, unified champion, three division champion. So if you keep a score, who had more? 
on that date. On that particular date. Now, I understand Earl Spence has three belts now. And what I think is, you know, Earl Spence believed he is better than Crawford. Ain't no crime in that. He's supposed to believe that. He believes he's better. He's supposed to believe that. I don't have a problem with that at all. If you're a fighter, that's what you're supposed to believe. But let's keep it real. And let's keep it fair. How do you, a person who only won one thing in your career as of that date, September 9th, 2018, gather the spit in your mouth to say, you are the A side. And y'all going to tell me that that's not arrogance at play? Y'all not going to tell me that that sound fair to y'all or not? But the title is Keith Thurman and Earl Spence are the same. Well, I just showed you how they similar. How they similar. Oh, before I get all the way into it, I'm, well, I'll answer that at the end of the show. I, answer, cause I, I told you if you write me questions, I will answer. I do have a question. This is why is filtering systems important for your overall health? I will answer that at the end part of my show before I sign out. And let me stay on the road so I can drop this link. So the reason why I'm bringing this up with the Keith Thurman and Earl Spence being pretty much the same is because Keith Thurman is making a lot of headway. He's making a lot of noise out there in these boxing streets. And he got some folks eat off. He want to interject himself, you know, to be relevant. You know, we don't know if Keith is doing his last hurrah or maybe it's just a money grab. Some people say it's, it's just a money grab. He know in order to do the money grabs, he got to fight the top echelon fighters. And that would be Terrence and Earl Spence or maybe even Boots. But Keith, you know, Keith say a lot of things that make people feel like he's a liar. I'm not you know, debating that or whatever. I'm saying, all I'm simply saying is I was a Keith Thurman fan, a big Keith Thurman fan. Still am to a certain to a certain degree. You know, I'm still I'm still a Keith Thurman fan. After all, guys, he only lost one fight. That's it. It ain't like he lost a whole bunch of fights. He lost one fight. And if you're going to lose to somebody, better to lose to somebody like a, a, le a legend, like Pacquiao. So he lost his fight to Pacquiao. That was his only loss. But at one time, Keith was the man. But if you're a human being, and which all of us are, there's certain things you could do to cause doubt. There's things you got to have in your repertoire as a boxer. And, you know, and, and I'll talk about those more a little bit more later. later. But um, you got to have these certain ingredients within your repertoire as a boxer. I mean, if you don't have him, maybe you shouldn't be boxing, you know. But Keith only lost one fight. Keith is trying to reassure his career or resurrect his career. He is claiming he wants a shot at the titles. Can't be mad at him because that's what he wants to do. Yeah. You can't be mad at him because that's what he wants to do. He also wants astronomical pay his time and effort. Now, a lot of folks get mad at that because they're like, oh, you're trying to get a money grab. But didn't we learn that P PBC pays people partially? And if you think about it, see, I don't know why this doesn't enter into people's head as a possible or plausible reasoning for asking for $10 million. Is it possible that PBC used Keith Thurman and I'm not saying in a bad way because fair exchange is no robbery. But think about PVC today. Where did they get their bones from? Fighters like Keith Thurman, Wilder, AB, even Leo, Santa Cruz. They helped build PBC. They were fighting on free TV, but they helped build the brand that we know as PBC. Maybe they was given partial payments all along. And then the payments was disseminated or reinvested in the brand, which is PBC. Maybe 
that can be a reason why Keith Thurman is asking for $10 million. Maybe he's saying at this point, I want my check right now. As soon as I do the deed, I want it all. Maybe he, he comes up with the number 10 million because we've heard that he asked for that even with Bud. There's something about this 10 million. Maybe that's the cumulative amounts that he didn't get while PBC is reinvesting his money or paying them partial payments. For PBC, you can say they owe a debt of gratitude to Keith Thurman. Maybe that's why PBC works with Keith. Maybe there was promises made that haven't been fulfilled. Y'all can say it's Keith's fault because he had a lot of layoffs. But if you're boxing and training to box, because like I told you, I used to be a boxing coach. I haven't because of COVID here lately, but... Um, I did children. I work with children. And um, we had a thing that if you were eight years old, we'll work with you, right? Because anything younger than that, it's a behavior thing. <laughs> you don't got time for it. But eight years old and up. So most fighters start off like that, right? They, they young gentlemen, young ladies, they give it their all. They put a lot of effort and time into it over the years. Body gets wear and tear. And when you just starting off, and think of Keith when he was just starting off, when the PVC was just starting off, Keith was running through Nicks. You didn't say that Keith was chinny then. You didn't say he was stomachy then. He was on a mission. And he helped build the brand. Because unlike Terrence and, and Earl, y'all know how I feel about Terrence, but Keith is more sellable. In their eyes, he come in a shell that they feel like they could sell. There's a lot of different races that will look at Keith and find him relatable. Like if if he never if he stood there and never opened his mouth, Latinos could claim him and be like, "Yo, he's a Latino." You know, other people could claim him. Black people, we see the black in them. White people, you see the white in them. So Keith is sellable. And I'm not saying that that's what people have to be in order to be successful in boxing. I'm just saying it is what it is in this country. So Keith is a sellable commodity. Earl Spence has never did the numbers that Keith, spent, Keith Thurman has done. So who is the cash cow? Earl, you give it to Earl because he's consistent. He fights more than Keith here lately. But did Earl Spence get 600,000 pay-per-view buys? Somebody in the chat let me know. No, he didn't. So when they be saying he's a pay-per-view star, no, he's not. But you can take, you can, you can, um, as far as PBC was concerned, they can make money off of Keith Thurman. And Keith Thurman last outing, he didn't do great, but who has? Neither did Earl. Neither did uh, Luis Ortiz and anybody else who been having pay per views. Nobody made no no great strides in pay per view sales here lately. The pandemic fucked a lot of people up. But on record, between Earl and Keith, Keith made the most. It is what it is. You know, Earl. You know he's a draw. He gets people in there and all that. But when I think of Keith asking for $10 million, I think it's more to the story than that. But he don't have to sit up here and tell us as fans that's his personal business. Maybe Al Heyman owes him that money. Maybe he's saying, hey, you know, I'll fight these tough young killers, and um, but you got to pay me. You've been, you've been partially paying me all along. And I don't know that for a fact. See, I, I'm woman enough to say I don't know that for a fact. But if you listen to AB, I just told you, AB and Keith is one of the reasons why PBC is where they are today. And they did it to AB. Why wouldn't they do it to Keith? I'm just saying. I'm not mad at Keith for any of this. 
because he is a solidified champ. You can always call him champ. He was the shit in his day. And keep in mind, like I said, he only had one loss. He, you know, he was the man. He was the top fighter. He was a unified champ. That's what Keith was in the welterweight division. And if excuse him for not paying attention to some to some young Rudy Poo. Not saying Earl Earl like the shit, because Earl always been the shit. But when he was coming up in the ranks, he was a young Rudy Poo to Keith. Why would Keith look that far back? The same reason why I would say, why would Earl look that far back? Earl got bigger fish to fry. Earl can't pay attention to boots. He need to go on and get that undisputed. Crawford can't pay attention to boots. He need to get that undisputed. That was, that is what Keith was thinking. You could call it being scared or whatever. Maybe he was, maybe he won't. None of us is in his head. I don't think so. I don't think none of them are scared. I think some fighters out there that are scared, but none of them, what I say, is scared. Gerald Cross is in the building. What's Poppy King? He said, Thurman beats Crawford. Okay. Thurman is a, a, a boxer. He is, he's, he's, um, I don't think he's as a complete boxer as Crawford, but he is a boxer nonetheless. That would be a good fight. But Thurman got to believe that he could get in there and fight uh, Crawford. Ain't nothing to Crawford. Crawford been calling him out. I just played a video where you heard Earl Spence say out his mouth, they been calling us out. Or he been calling us out. He didn't just say, Crawford just was calling me out. He was saying, because every time that, that Earl got up before the mic or whatever, people been asking him, what about you and Crawford? Because Crawford was calling him out. Well, you just saw a video dated September 9th, 2018, where Earl Spence said out his mouth, yes, indeed, Crawford been calling them out. That means Keith and Earl. Because you also heard Earl say he wants to fight Keith. Now, when Keith lost his belts, Earl treated him like a wet food. So he ain't, he ain't give a care. I'm not mad. I'm not saying it like I'm mad. I'm just saying what it is. But, but so, you know, if he was saying in this video that, you know, he was interested in the Keith Thurman fight, then that means Keith was still relevant. And Earl wanted the belt off of him. You know, uh, Ger Ger uh, Gerald Cross said his timing and power Crawford Cheney. And a lot of people say that, but if Crawford's Cheney, so is Earl, and so is a lot of them. When you young, it's hard to see. They take the shit very well. As they get older, they they you know they fall off. And I'm gonna tell you uh about Keith Thurman. And I've said this before in my in a previous video, I think last year. I've met Keith Thurman. I'm gonna tell you he's a pleasant guy. He's sociable. You know, he, he's he's fan friendly. I'm gonna say it like that. He is really fan friendly, and um, you as a fan wouldn't have no problems feeling like you could walk up to him and say, "Hey, can I get a picture or an autograph?" You know, not everybody is fan friendly, but Keith Thurman is one. Another person I met um, a long time ago was Bud Crawford, and I met him again last year. And again, I say the same thing I said about Keith about Bud. But let me tell you about Keith. Now. I met Keith in 2015, and I met Bud in 2015. And I met them at the Pacquiao Floyd fight. I had tickets there. And I went up to my room after I gambled a little bit and, you know, hung around after the fight. But nobody was going home. Everybody was still gathered around and stuff. So then, for some reason, I got hungry. It was like one summer in the morning. So I go back downstairs. And I go to the food court, and that's where everybody was. First person I see is Marquez, and he walking. When I say he got his own theme music, boy, this dude seemed like he walking like like he shaft or somebody. You know, he had a camera on him with the light on him. The dude was walking so fast, I wasn't even trying to keep up. I was like, duh, 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 uh, uh, you know, because at the time, it was so many, everybody who's anybody in boxing and just celebrity spirit was there. I met Tom Brady. I didn't really know who he was at the time, but people was telling me after the fact, hey, that was Tom Brady. I don't watch football. So, hey, you know, I missed that one. 
Uh, I met Bishop Don Juan. I was meeting a whole lot of folks. But anywho, I get to the food court and I order, and I'm hungry for some reason. And I order this, uh, this the biggest Philly cheesesteak sandwich they have, right? So I'm, I'm peeping game. I see Keith. I see him with some folks. He, but he's sitting at a table by himself. Everybody else is to the right of him. And this dude got one of their big pieces. I don't know if you ever been to the MGM where down in that food court, they said this piece, the piece would be huge as a bitch, bigger than, bigger than the table. I saw Keith Thurman. I watched him for about an hour. I saw him demolish a motherfucking uh, piece by itself. I was like, God damn. And it wasn't like he was way overweight. I would say the day that I saw him, he probably looked like he was about 160. That dude demolished a pizza. And then he came back up where I had just ordered my Philly cheesesteak. Because they called his number. And I was like, oh, shit, what I'm going to do? So when he gets up there, I said, Keith. Just like that. I was like, I've been looking for you all night. <laughs> and he started laughing. He said, I've been looking for you too, boo. He said, I said, can I get a picture? He said, yeah, let's get this picture. So we took a picture. And then he said, no, nah, I don't like that one. Let's do another one. So I got two pictures with him. The second picture was at his request. I said, oh, man, this dude is fan, fan friendly. So he had came up that way because his other order was in. And he had a large sandwich like mine, but he had everything on his shit. He went back, sat down, ate that motherfucker. In one city. I told you I watched them. I ordered my food, but I was waiting and watching them. And then after I got my food, I sat down. I, I didn't eat. I was watching them. Just, you know, thinking, you know, I was I was awestruck because I was a big key fan. Now we know that uh Earl Spence claimed the fame is when, you know, Spar Mayweather won. But also when Keith back then was calling out Mayweather, calling out Mayweather, calling out Mayweather. Uh, Mayweather threw Earl in the mix to be like, yo, why you calling me? Get this nigga. You know what I'm saying? And that's how Earl got on the big stage because Mayweather threw him out there as somebody to to, to challenge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gerald Cross said Crawford was calling him out and he was with top rank knowing Bob wasn't going to make those fights. Bob thought he could. I honestly think Bob <laughs> probably did try to call. I don't think he gave a conservative effort, but I think he thought he could. And, you know, but Bob was talking. This is, what, this is why I say I thought I think that Bob thought he could. Because Bob is a miser in a, in a sense. He ain't throwing no money nowhere. He ain't, he ain't going to just give you a couple thousand just to be giving you. Bob ain't that type of guy. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but he's just not that type of guy. So if Bob, why would Bob sign a contract that says, I'm going to pay you this minimum payment, and if I don't get you this fight, I'm going to pay you an extra $900,000 every time I don't get the fight. And then I'm going to get you at least two fights a year. If Bob didn't think he could do these things, why would he sign a contract? You got to think about the type of man he is. He don't just give money just to be given money. He's a miser. Gerald Cross said, Crawford has the weakest undisputed run in boxing history. I don't think he do. But I hear you. Kay said, Crawford not chinny. Um, he said, Earl called out horns, so now what? Um, he said, if streets matter so much, why they ain't make Wilder versus Martin, Spence versus Thurman? Yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter. I, You know, I put out interviews. I mean, I mean, not interviews, I'm sorry. Uh, I did a show, but I, I kind of explained um, that fugaziness, right? You know, um, well, four years ago, Earl Spence is on tape talking about he got the final say, and he works with Al, and Al sits down and tells him how they think his career should go. So you telling me if, if Crawford, if you knew Crawford was calling you out and you sitting down with Al, you don't know that Al and PBC altogether do not want the fight with Crawford, never have wanted that fight. You don't know that. But then you spend the next three, four years downgrading Crawford and trying to act like um, it's his fault that y'all ain't fighting when really it's y'all fault. I mean, can you explain that one? 
That's that's just a no brainer. They said Dev just beat George Cambosa. That's just a no brainer. And if you are mad at Keith, then you have to be mad at Earl too. Let me get back to the topic. They are mirror images of each other. And mind you, I don't totally disagree with a lot of you guys' assessment of Keith because I can see why one would feel and look at the situation the way a lot of you do. Some of us can give him the benefit of the doubt. Some of us just can't. They don't want to. Okay. So hold, hold tight, Tay. But my only issue is how do some see Keith um, issues so clearly, but not arrows? The twins in this. Let's unpack this issue, shall we? Keith a liar or lies. That's what people say. He's scared or he play games. It's another thing people say. He has ruined the uh, welterweight class, you know, by holding on and stiffing on and, um, Earl and all that. Even though Earl wasn't on his level at the time, he, he, you know, some people say you messed up the whole welterweight division by doing the, the dumb shit you was doing. Uh, he was ducking Earl Spence. This is what a lot of people say. Now let's let's one by one unpack them. Okay. So the lies, this is what they say, Keith Thurman lies. They say he lied about his injuries. Well, how y'all know? How y'all know that this man ain't been suffering from injuries since he been boxing ever since the amateur all the way up to pro in his young life? And then at, at one point, you're going to address your injuries. If you don't address injuries right away, they're going to be tougher to deal with later on. You know, especially when you get in your 30s, it seems like shit go down here. After any of us get in our thirties, it is impossible to believe that the um, man sustained injuries over the years and finally had to address them. So y'all saying that it's impossible for that to be a situation? Injuries can't make you develop doubt. I'm asking that question. Like when you get injured, you don't all of a sudden start, you know, like doubt creeping in. It's human nature. You live your life invincible. I'm the man. I can beat everybody. Don't fuck me, son. All this shit. You you got an injury that's going to take you a little bit more than you thought to, to, to fix. You don't think doubt creeps in? You got a young, hungry lion like Earl Spence coming up the ranks wanting to, wanting to get in with you. And you over here injured like a motherfucker. You know you're going to have to be at your best to fight this dude. You don't think doubts creep in? I mean, if it do, and that's what the problem is, y'all dislike that. I don't have an argument for it. I'm not, I'm just, I'm not debating it. I'm just saying, can't look at it like that. Okay, saying Postal was ducked by Danny, and um, Thurman's still top five welterweight, okay? So if you, if you start letting doubt creep in, then your belief changes. It can make you hesitant. Didn't Errol have injuries? Again, <laughs> Errol just said in the video I played, and that was four years ago, he been calling all of us out, but he on the wrong side of the street, talking about Terrence. So when y'all say that Terrence wasn't calling them out for so many years, Errol just said it. Errol just said it. When Errol makes a video and say, I work for Al, Al and me sit down, and talk about and go over my career and talk about what I should do next and this, that, and the other. So you know that Bud been calling you out. You telling me when you went when Al sat down, y'all didn't have this conversation. You know, and, and furthermore, if you think about it, is Earl gonna fight Keith now? No, he's not. He's emphatic about that shit. He ain't fighting Keith. And he he just said his piece. The man has spoken. He ain't fighting him. But where's all that authority and bravado when it comes to uh, Terrence? How you how you can't put your same foot down and say, I don't care what y'all want at PBC. I'm fighting Terrence. What's that about? You telling me Earl Spence did not know that PBC do not want to fight with Terrence. I ain't even talking about Earl. I'm saying PBC didn't want him. They all but said it. But we supposed to believe that Earl didn't know that. 
PGH Big Dog is in the building. Salute, King. Uh, Tay said, I want a uh, GF like an Earl Spence fan, no matter what they done, no matter what they going to ride, even when you're wrong. PGA said, no comparison between Spence and Thurman. Stop the gap. It is. I- I'm making it. You was on a, uh, on Goat Mike, PGH. Thurman held up the division for years. Spence unifying the division. You guys, I'm telling you, you biased. It's the same shit. It's the same shit, PGH. You, you're being biased. Thurman and, 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 and Spence are both welterweights. They both pretty much stand in the same division. They both are unified champions in that division. Okay? Uh, as far as record go for pay-per-view sales, Thurman got um, uh, Earl beat. Earl has never made 600,000 pay-per-view sales. Thurman did. I know, I know, it don't look pretty. I know it's, <laughs> Thurman been, you know, we, we looking at Thurman as of late. But I'm talking about <laughs> through the whole thing. Thurman, Thurman was a unified champ chasing glory. Earl was new up and coming. Floyd threw him in the mix. Now Keith's supposed to stop what he's doing and go all the way back and reach for uh, Earl. Something that Earl don't do now. Earl don't do that shit. Keith was running his career. Whether we liked it or not, he was running his career. PGA said, Tay, salute fam. Yeah, I slid through. Uh, Tay said, Spence held up the division. They doing the same thing. Earl is mad at Thurman because he didn't give him a shot. Most of that time that Thurman didn't give him a shot, Earl was not on his level. Not yet. Not that he couldn't be. He just hasn't got there yet. He was new up and coming. So you mad because he treated you like a new up and coming, which you are now doing to Boots and everybody else. That's what you're doing, Earl. You're doing that to them. What's the difference? They said, but yeah, I saw. Uh, they said, that shit on Goat Mike was something else, just hating on another man. And uh, he said, shit was corny. I had to go. Uh, PGA said, that was pack pay-per-view. Stop it. What did Thurman versus Barrios do? You can't do that, PGH. You can't do that. Because if you're going to do that, then we're going to say every Earl Spence fight was the other guy. And you're going to say, no, no. But you have no way to prove that. There's nothing you or I can't prove. What we can prove is that Keith Thurman had a fight where he garnered 600,000 pay-per-views. What we can prove is that Keith Thurman is one of the guys Who's responsible for PBC being what it is today? Not Errol Spence. That was Keith Thurman, Wilder, AB, and maybe even Leo Santa Cruz. They built PBC. Not Errol Spence. So I'm not capping. You guys are capping. You are selecting what you want to select. Yeah, Barrios and Thurman was not good. I get that to you. It was not good. He didn't garnish a whole lot of pay-per-view. But neither was Earl Spence numbers with um with uh Ugas. And Earl Spence, as far as pay-per-view, is not a star. You have record breaking numbers out there. Earl Spence don't even come close. Neither do Terrence. Neither do anybody else. You barely can get uh Canelo or Wilder to even kinda come close. Mayweather already laid the blueprint. None of them come close to that shit. Mike Tyson. None of them come close to his shit. So if you're saying it, then you're just not being honest. You're being biased, and that's your favorite fighter. That's cool. What you could say is that uh, Earl Spence numbers are better than his peers right now. That's what you could say. But to call him a star, or to, hey, we got to act like that Keith Thurman didn't get 600 pay-per-views. The, the marquee said, Thurman and Pacquiao. So you got to give him credit for that. But if you're going to use that logic, use it for Earl too. And all the half of that pay-per-view that Earl got was from his opponent. You have to keep the same energy. Earl and Thurman is like looking through a mirror. It is. It is. 
Gerald Cross says, see, when you talking about Crawford calling them out, Crawford was in top rank witness protection program, PB, PBS, um, had or PBC had all the top fighters at 147. EJ was right by fighting the best competition at 147. Okay. Uh, PGA said, yes, I can. I can prove it by looking at PAC pay-per-view numbers. Thurman did nothing with PAC. You cannot prove it. You cannot say, PGH, who was coming for who. You can't. I don't know how y'all split hairs like that. So what you saying? Uh, Thurman was responsible for 50 people? That's it? That's all? He was responsible for that, and you know those 50 people? You know? That's what you're going to say? Like I said, what we can say is that Earl Spence bring more people to the yard amongst his peers. Currently, that's what we can say. But you cannot say that Earl Spence did a pay-per-view fight where he, he garnered more than $350,000. And that was with Mikey Garcia. And it's been declining ever since. He did maybe 240000 with Ugas. These are facts. Okay. How many fights did Thurman have on pay-per-view? Daryl said EJ will fight Boots at 154. EJ been at 147. 10 years. Let Boots hasn't fought it, nobody. You know, maybe Boots going to run into Terrence and EJ in the near future. We don't know. We have to see it. You guys say it like it's an absolute fact. All I can say is I don't know. We have to see. Both of these guys are top echelon fighters. Both of these gentlemen. They don't need to be looking backwards. They need to be looking forward, no matter where they go. They say, I thought he said it was easy route shit. Earl ain't think they wasn't that much. You know, PGA said. Because Pac is pay-per-view star. No, he's not. When, when What are y'all basing these stars off of? Thurman was never a pay-per-view star. Thurman got more pay-per-view than Earl did. Here he gets. The name wasn't Earl and Pacquiao. It was Thurman and Pacquiao. So you can selectively give credit to Pacquiao and not Thurman. But it's Thurman's name on a marquee. You can't say that Thurman wasn't one of the main guys that built PBC. Can't say it. He fought Porter, Danny, and Ugas, and aerosexuals went wild. <laughs> wait a minute. Tate, the reason why I make you wait because you be interrupting. You don't know how to get in. I will put you in here, but you be interrupted. So let me finish. I'm going to hurry up and finish so I can drop this link. Did Earl have injuries? Uh, yeah, Earl got injuries. He's stepping up in competition, showed him it was a little uh, harder. He, he was exposed. You don't think that Earl Spence has doubt either? Again, none of y'all will ever address the thing that I asked. Did Earl Spence know PBC's stance or position on Terrence Crawford? None of y'all will answer that. Y'all won't answer that. Because if he knew, then you have to ask, what was this last three or four years? Even in that video, you guys going to act like you didn't see that video I just played. Well, even at the IBF, he had the IBF championship belt. As of September 9th, 2018, the only belt that Earl Spence said was the IBF championship belt. On that date, the only belt that Terrence Crawford had was the WBO championship belt. So why in the hell would Earl Spence say, I'm the A-side? He didn't have the WBC. He didn't have the WBA. He only had the IBF and Bud only had the um, WBO. Why would he say he's the A-side? Can anybody answer that question while I'm moving on? Gerald Cross said, pay-per-view is never going to be Mayweather numbers again, so stop that shit. You don't know that. You can't say it never. We never thought it could be with that. <laughs> you don't know that. 
We can never say never. We can't talk in absolutes. Tay say, I promise I won't interrupt. <laughs> I, you interrupt, I'm gonna knock you back the fuck out. <laughs> Oh shit, hold on. It's it's blocking me. Huh? Okay. Hey, talk over people, Tay. Okay. <laughs> PGA said Thurman didn't build PBC on, on pay per view. Stop it. But um F them pay per view numbers. Bud need to stop holding up this fight. See? You, you can't win that argument. You cannot win that argument. So, of course, and I love you, PTH. You know I do. You know I do. I say this respectfully. We just talking. But you know, you cannot win that argument. So you say, fuck them pay per few numbers. It's a fact. You can't say fuck it. Thurman had a fight, but his pay per views did way better than Earl. I don't care how you slice it, dice it, whatever. But see, I don't use pay per view numbers. To, to assess somebody's value, they they're not that big a deal. But I mean, this is this is one of the things that um, Spence fans use all the time. But you heard Spence say, anybody got anything to say about the fact that um, Spence said I'm the A side? Okay, Jerry Cross. I mean, you guys hold tight, hold tight. Let me go on to finish. So I can get y'all y'all's opinion without interruption. I appreciate y'all, King. Uh, so Keith. I had um, gave reasons, reasons and fluff yes, as to why he couldn't fight Earl. And that's why I said I don't debate y'all. Because if y'all see it that way, y'all see it that way. Y'all said he's scared yeah, of games and all that. And um, I don't have to remind y'all of all the crazy reasons why he couldn't make the fight with um, Earl. Uh, he ain't ready. This is things that, uh, that Keith was saying. He ain't ready. And, you know, get a belt. I got a plan. Do any of that sounds familiar? He ain't ready to um like that ass up, you know. Uh you you right about that. You right about that. Oh tight, oh tight, sir. Oh tight, sir. It's all the stuff to keep saying. I remember too. And um, and I'm gonna show you how it's similar for Bud, because on all of those, Earl said the same thing. He ain't ready, he too light in the ass. What Earl said about uh I don't know where you went to, Gerald. Um, you in here. I added you. I don't know why that popped out. But um, so he said, um, too light in the ass. And Earl at, at first wanted Jeff Horn, wanted that belt. He said, line them up, no problem. We ain't hear about no side of the street then. Then um, you know, he said, You ain't a real champ. The WBO ain't nothing. That's what a lot of people I Earl, I've heard Earl say that, but a lot of his fans say WBO ain't real when it is. Uh yet as soon as Jeff got the belt. Vince would say, hey, I'm ready for that. Find that up. I want in. Uh, look in front of him on that. And, um, I don't uh, take the easy route. That's what he said. So clean up my side of the street. Then we can talk. That's the second plan. The first plan was go get a belt. Then Earl called out. They named off a lot of folks. Good accent. Now they mentioned my name. Spence said, no, nah, he didn't. But I say you smart, but you ain't that smart. I'm almost saying y'all. At that point, um, the plan and requirement changed because the first plan was go get a belt. Uh, since we hang on Bob Aram words and what Bob says, what did Bob say in that in that in that thing? He said the smartest thing to do is never fight this man. He told Earl that, and. Um, then they bet, and, and Earl said 100 k Bud said bet a million. I mean, just that little confrontation, it seems to me that Bud, you know, was the victor in that one. Um, to be clear, you can do what you what you want with your career. I, I do fully believe that. You can have a plan or an objective that don't include whomever. I believe that, too. It's not a crime or the end of the world for Earl to have what he has. But Whatever you do, you got to know that people are going to speculate and come back and have opinions on everything you say. And Earl single-handedly took uh, the shine off of Keith and made him a bad guy. He besmirched his name, his character, calling him out, destroying his credibility. Earl did that. Earl do that a lot with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, that was done on purpose by design, dropping little in windows and alluding to things, talking cryptic uh, and vague. It, it, you know, effectively not keep Thurman off his porch or off his perch. Uh, you notice I didn't disagree on y'all on, on what Keith did or how it looked because I can't. I can't. It looked like what it looked like. Y'all gonna have y'all assessment. I can't really say nothing. So the crime was Mayweather in certain sense into the talks of fighting Keith and Keith avoiding error doing everything he could to not give him a fight. Coming up with all these stupid ass reasons and then we gonna act like Earl ain't doing the same thing. I'm cutting it short a little bit. But I know y'all been waiting. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know what happened to Tay. Um, wait a minute. Make sure I got everything. Now, between the three of them, and y'all know it's Bud over here, Bud Country, Keith is the more celebrated, according to PBC. This is why they entertain them. Why they talk to them. Because on record, no matter how you slice it, dice it, whatever, Keith brought more asses in the seat, he put more asses in the seat, and he and people bought more pay per views when it came to him. It is what it is. So, I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you, Gerald Cross. Thank you for coming in, King. Oh man, I don't know what you're doing, but you're popping yourself out. I'm gonna go ahead uh, and let you cook, and I'm, I'm gonna sit back and listen. What you what say, you King? we talking about Crawford, right? Yeah, we talked about Crawford, Keith, and um, and Thurman. I, 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 I think I think Keith had his reasons for not fighting Earl at that time because he's doing the same. He was trying to do the same thing that Earl was trying to do when Crawford called him out is chase the belts. That's what I think. But then you got two sides. You got the promoter side. Who going who gonna bring the most money to the table? That's what Bob was saying about making fights for Crawford. He doesn't sell his fights. You know, he's losing money. So that was holding up him from getting over there fighting the PBC fight. But Bud knew that, though, because he signed with Bob two or three times. He knew he wasn't going to get them big fights when he was calling them dudes out because he knew Bob wasn't going to put the money behind him. So that's why I say... Let me interject one thing, King. We got to be factual what we say. He never signed with Bob three times. He he, uh, he signed with Bob, and then he did an extension or restructuring of his contract. But go ahead, King. I'm sorry. But he was still up under top rank. He just got from under top rank after he fought uh, Porter, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I right? Okay. Yes, sir. So, but like I said, he knew he wasn't going to get those fights because Bob wasn't going to put that money behind him. So he could call people out. All he wanted to, they Bob wasn't gonna make them fights because it's a little friction between PBS fighters and top rank. Because Floyd Mayweather already told people about Bob, I don't want to make money with Bob. So Earl looked at that like I don't want to negotiate making fights with Bob. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he said I'm gonna take the easy route. All the fighters on my side, which PBC did have the best 147 fighters, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia. Uh, 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 who else? Mikey Gar, uh, Mikey Garcia. They, they have the better fighters. Who over at uh top rank that Bud fought? That's why I say Bud had to have the easier role when he was fighting the in uh the in in house fighters with top rank. He had I ain't gonna say easy fight because ain't no fights easy, but he had the lesser competition. And Bud one knew second. that. One second, Kate. Let me give a shout out to. I uh, make sure I try to recognize. Everybody to come through. E dog, welcome to the building. He said, "Shout out Queen T in the chat and Super Bros X." Uh, welcome to the building, King. He said, "This is an easy fight for Bud. Bud has the better resume by far." I'm sorry for interrupting, oh, Gerald. You got to yeah. go look at that box rank, man. I mean, I like Bud. Don't get me wrong. Just because I criticize his 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 box rank, if you go look at anybody he fought on his, just look at their record. Look who they fought. I, and I I put it this way. Earl, he got a lot of work to do too, cause his 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 uh resume is all right. He had the stiffer competition, but man, when you start talking about Hall of Fame and pound for pound, Bud had to. If you go look at his box record, see he bought well, who he fight? Uh, what's the guy? Uh, uh, Dingo. He fought him. 
you go look at his record. Oh my God, it's terrible. He, he was a champion though, sir. Yeah, but He's still champion. though, he, the competition. Let's you anybody can de- almost get a belt if if two if somebody uh, drop a belt and they move up and it's a vacant belt. Whoever they pick to say, hey, I want you two to fight for this belt. That's who they're gonna put in there. It, it could be somebody who doesn't have a a good resume, and then they could be somebody else who don't have a good resume, and they got the belt. And then, you know, Bud come behind, oh, he got the belt. I'm going to fight him. And this guy, his competition wasn't done. But of course, Bud going to beat them guys because Bud can fight. Don't get me wrong. He can fight. I think he, you know, can beat most of the 147 guys. I just don't think he can beat – I don't think he can beat Keith Thurman. If Keith Thurman come in there healthy and, and, and good shape and, and, you know, work on that body stuff, I think he can, he can outbox uh, 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 Crawford. I think Sean Porter was beating Crawford. He was beating Crawford. If he would have trained like he trained with Earl, he probably could have won that fight. I had him up. I had him up five rounds to four until he got, you know, stopped. But his, so, his, hey, I have a question, sir. Okay. Um, well, we, we, we can only gauge the couple of fighters that Earl Spence have fought versus Crawford fought. And they right. both have fought um, Dale Brook and Sean Porter, correct? Right. So, Sean Porter, we all know how he fights. There's right. only one other time that he didn't do his normal is when he fought Ugas, and I don't know why. I don't have right. an answer for why he didn't fight his normal. Are we correct? Yeah, we, 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 his, that, his yeah. father told us he didn't train. Uh, no, I'm talking about Ugas. When he fought Ugas, he didn't do his normal. Now, I think he lost against Ugas also. I, I, I kind of thought Ugas asked him out, but he didn't fight yeah. Ugas the way he normally fights. We I remember right. the Kel Burke fight and Porter fight, um, yeah. and Sean gave him fits. I mean, Sean would give anybody fits because exactly. that's the way he likes to make you uncomfortable. So right. we can say what we want, but everybody knows the date of the fight, right? Right. All the fighters know, and they got and it's coming upon the fighter because ain't nobody do it for you. It's to get into the ring. Um, and do what you're supposed to do. So, in the end of the day, no excuses. Is that fair to say? No excuses yeah. as far as Crawford beating. There's no Porter. excuses for Porter's father saying he didn't train. He right. can't factor in and out. No excuses. Porter did okay. the date of the fight. He was supposed to show up ready. And if he wasn't ready, that's his fault. There's no excuses. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree with so, that. So but I why wasn't this, he ready? He didn't take that matter, fight serious. But that's what I'm trying to say, Gerald. It doesn't matter because you knew you had a fight. Like, if I know I got to be at work, I don't care what goes on in my neighborhood, in my house, or whatever. I know I got to be at work at 7. My boss going to look at me as no excuses. He don't care if it was a party. He don't care if a celebrity showed up. Or oh, Mayweather himself could show up on my block. But we got a block party. My boss don't give a shit. My boss want me there at seven. That's when I'm supposed to be there. I'm sorry, I lost Gerald. I'm not sure uh, where he went, but um, I was trying to I was trying to say, uh, as far as the, the the Porter Smith fight, a lot of times Smith fans would like to say he was trying to fight Porter's fight, but then when his bud and him fight, he was like, uh, you know, we can't give those type of excuses. Bud fought Porter better than Earl fought. Bud fought um, Kel Brook better than Errol fought Kel Brook. Again, you know the date of the fight. There's no excuses. Right. Okay. So he fought him better. If you look at Spence's face at the end of the fight, he was beat up. Look at uh, 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 Crawford's face. He wasn't. Also, uh, when I when I think of Sean Porter. I'll be like, he has a different level of being hurt than most other fighters or his contemporaries by far. Like, Sean Porter Hurt is on another level because that dude, he will continue to fight, grimy, and, and kind of like, like he almost like you playing football, be all over you, as he say, make you uncomfortable no matter what you throw at him, and nobody's able to knock him down or whatever. Spence knocked him down, he jumped right back up. Um, Crawford knocked him down. He had to take a pause. You see a difference? 
I yeah, I see the difference. I see that Sean didn't didn't train as good as as you know good as he did when he fought fought Spence. That's what I see. Yeah, I can't. That's do what it. I, I see. don't know how you see because that you got to say that because that's what his dad said. His dad said that's why he threw no, in the time. No excuses. You knew the date. You knew you were supposed to fight. No, I'm just going by what his camp said, his dad said, why his he stopped dad, the fight. Because he, he was winning. He was winning the fight to me. Not, to me, he wasn't. But I mean, I, mean, he, I had him up five him. rounds to four. He yeah. was winning the fight, uh, you know, and until he got caught. And I, I don't know. I mean, you, you got your point. I got my opinion or right, whatever. Right. But, I mean, I think he just didn't go on that fight and took that fight as serious as he did with Earl. Cause we know Sean, I just, I just, he didn't have, he was fighting him, he was winning. But if he would have fought Crawford like he fought Earl, it he would have won that fight. He would have won that fight, split decision or something. He could have pulled that one out. I don't even see that at all. I, I see that when it came, they, they, had, they had that man type of tug of war going on in, in the early rounds. Like the muscle, I ain't gonna lie. Bug can fight. Bug can fight. Bug, I like Bug, Bug but I just don't think I don't think Bug can be. I don't think he can beat Thurman if Thurman come in mm-hmm. in, in tip top shape. I don't think he can beat Earl, uh, Earl. And the reason why I say he can, Earl, because, like you said, I heard you say this: when he get hit, he like to hit back, and he gonna get into a dog fight with Earl, and and that's when Earl going gonna take him out of there. That's just how I see it. You know, I, I ain't saying he just gonna get up in there and whoop on a uh, whoop and run through Crawford. But like like if you watch any of Crawford fight, when somebody hit him and he felt like he you he won his leg back, he get in that dog fighting stuff. And once he get into that with Earl, it's gonna be a wrap. So if now if he come in there and box Earl and just keep Earl turning, not letting Earl go to the body, which I don't think he's gonna be able to do that, because he does clinch a lot. Crawford clinches a lot. Once you get on the inside and he feel like you're trying to take over, he'll clinch you and he'll let the ref break it up and then he'll set you up. He ain't going to be able to do that with Earl. You see know, how so. I see it is Earl, Earl fights one way. He really don't have many adjustments. He can't fight going back not comfortably. Um, and I think Crawford does too many adjustments and too many nuanced things. But I'm going to let Bo get in here, sir. Uh, um, and, and like staying here, um, I appreciate your opinion. And you actually, to me, explain your point of view when it comes to Spence better than most people have that I've heard. So I, I applaud you for that. Thank you for coming in. But do stay in here. Oh, what's up? What you got on? Hey, what's going on, Miss T? How you doing? I'm good. So, both, well, I'm gonna let you go ahead and cook, Bo. But both of y'all, when, when you done cooking, I want y'all to ask, answer the question. Do you think Keith and Earl are similar in their approaches to how they've been running their career? But go ahead, Bo. Go ahead. Bo. I can I can answer that question right now. They they are similar. They both use the basically Earl Spence, Jack Keith Thurman style of ducking, and, and put it on steroids. And then on on top of that, Yikes. right? Yikes! Well, I, I, I didn't cut you off at one. Oh, at hold one on, point. Gerald. <laughs> I, I, I ain't cut him off one point in time. You know what I'm saying? I know. So, I know. I'm Gerald, sorry, but Gerald, that's, Gerald, a, that's a that's a no, big ass statement. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jared. This is your first time here. We give people ample time. You don't have to ever talk in spin or propaganda. We're gonna let you cook however long you need to cook. We try to be fair, let everybody, because we can't hear people when they talking together. So. I appreciate you, King, though. Go ahead, Bo. Yeah, um, basically, you know, they, they were both playing games. Keith Thurman started it first, right? And, and Keith Thurman probably had a little bit more of a, I guess, room to, you know, avoid uh, Errol Spence because Errol Spence at the time when he started calling Keith Thurman out, he wasn't really even known. He, he didn't really make a name for himself at the time. So Keith Thurman was just kind of like, you know, pushing it to the side, like, oh, well, you know, you need to go get this belt first, uh, and we will fight for three belts and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, he still avoided Earl Spence. Earl Spence took Keith Thurman's style and put it on steroids. 
That's why I call him Earl Spence 2.0. I mean, Keith Thurman 2.0. Because we could talk about other side of the streets all we want. Earl Spence was trying to fight Jeff Horn. He didn't give a fuck what side of the street Jeff Horn was on or anything. The minute Terrence Crawford came into the welterweight division, he was the super champ, you know, and at the 140 division. So he had first dibs. All of a sudden, you know, he got the belt like they told him. He got to get a belt first. He got the belt, and then they all audible the plays right then and there. It was no more of let's make the fight happen. As a matter of fact, we already seen the, the video uh, when, when Terrence Crawford approached Earl Spence with their logic. Wait wait till he get a belt first, and here, here go Earl Spence. Well, Sean Porter got a belt too. You know what I'm saying? Or, or why not take the easy route to fight Sean Porter first? Why not knock him out? He couldn't even knock out Sean Porter. He damn near barely won the fight. It was a split decision. Even though he had a knockdown, it was a split decision win. And then on top of that, this dude, this dude delayed the fight. You know, all of a sudden he want to clean up his side of the street. You wasn't trying to clean up your side of the street when it was Jeff Horn. Nobody said nothing about cleaning up any side of the street. Nobody said you was on the wrong side of the street. The minute Terrence Crawford come into play, it's like, oh, shoot, this dude is too dangerous. I'm just going to come up with every excuse as possible. Oh, I want to collect all the belts first and then fight um, Terrence Crawford. Like, dude, the, the biggest fight should have been made like three or four years ago. That fight should have been made. And we can't. I'm not gonna blame no damn promoters because at the end of the day, Keith Thurman and Earl Spence never fought. They got the same damn promoter. And then on top of that, it's like you can't force a dude to get in the ring with you. You just can't do it. I don't care how how I don't care. Like I, I that's why I can't really even put on a promoters because a promoter could be like, yo, let's let's make this fight happen. You cannot force a fighter to get in the ring with you if they don't want to fight you. Doesn't matter what side of the street on. Doesn't matter if they're on the same side of the street or anything. If that person want to hide behind a promoter and, and come up with politics, that's what they would do. And and on top of that, it wasn't even just Earl Spence. Keith Thurman ain't want to fight him. Remember, Mikey Garcia ain't want to fight uh, Terrence Crawford, and they were on top rank together. Danny Danny Garcia didn't want to fight uh, Terrence Crawford. The man the man was at one forty. He, he ducked out of the, the postal fight, moved up. Basically, Crawford had to come up there and clean up his mess that he left. You know what I'm saying? And then Crawford gets to uh, 147. They all asking for their they career paydays to fight Terrence Crawford, but they say he ain't fought nobody. How how Keith Thurman going to ask for $10 million to fight Terrence Crawford if he ain't fight nobody? Why is uh, Danny Garcia try to ask for more money to fight Terrence Crawford, but even though he didn't want to fight him? But Terrence Crawford ain't fought nobody. Why? Why is Earl Spence saying I gotta get it all, all the uh, clean up my side of the street first? Why? Because he wants to make sure he gets the lion's share based on belts. And this dude was depending on a um a ring magazine belt. Because you heard him, he was like, "Man, I was supposed to have got that ring magazine belt. Like that's the only belt you depend on. What about the biggest fight that you could make at welterweight? That's the fight that should have been happening. Fuck all that." clean up the side of the streets first. Like, it, it's to the point now, like, a lot of people are starting to get, like, disinterested in the damn fight even happening. To me, I just feel as though because Crawford at the time when he approached the dude, Crawford was, like, 30, 31 years old. Crawford's going on 35 this year. Do you think he's as dangerous as he was before? Nah, Earl Spence knows that. He feel comfortable now that Crawford is a little bit older. He's like, oh, dude. Maybe this is the time I can catch him now. Maybe his legs ain't moving the way it used to. Like, to me, that's, that's what it feel like. You know what I'm saying? He don't want, he don't want that smoke, man. So, hold up, hold up, Bo. Hold up, Bo. Hold up, hold up, Bo. So, so, Gerald. What? Uh, based on what Bo said and based on what I was saying, I was going to play the video again. I don't know what's up with my computer. Um, It's not letting me do it for some reason. But I was going to play the video again. What Earl said, um, he been calling all of us out and us being PBC. That was September 9th, 2018. So Earl Spence on that date, if you don't even want to say he knew before that date, because on that date, Earl Spence was the IBF champion. 
And on that date, Terrence Crawford was the WBO champion. So if Earl Spence knew on that date that Terrence Crawford been calling out PBC fighters, but then he said the 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 side of the street, and then the the thing that I picked up on that was he said I'm the A side. Um, I'm asking you, Gerald, can you explain that? Okay, like you just said, Bud just came into the welterweight, like dude just said, he he just came into the welterweight, went for Jeff Horn. Right, he could have called either one of the. Uh, he could have called Sean Porter out and went for that belt because Sean Porter had the belt. You see what I'm and saying? So easy. just because just because they th- he went this way and he went that way doesn't mean that they was ducking each other. It's just Earl told him the easier fights to make is the in house fights. Just like Crawford was making the in house fights. He, you know, he was making that fights because they was easier. They didn't have to do too much negotiating. Uh, top ranking PBC, you know, they had their little thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they made the Wilder and, and uh, Fury fight, but that was a big, major money heavyweight fight. But you talking about like two fighters that just, you know, one fighter that's just coming up to one weight class, 147. He went and got Jeff. He didn't call. He didn't. He he was calling them out, but he knew Bob wasn't gonna make them fights. Man, Bob even said it out of his mouth. He don't sell his own. See, I like what I, I think Bob thought he had another Mayweather when he got Crawford. He thought he had another Mayweather, a cash cow, but you know, Mayweather sold his fights through his mouth. And Crawford is not that type of fighter. He's not going to go out there and put on a show with his mouth. He's going to do it in the ring. So he wasn't marketable. So Bob wasn't going to make them fights, even though Crawford, he, yeah, he wanted to fight all of them. But he wasn't gonna make them fights, so that's why they were saying you you signed the second time he signed with top rank. People was like, why is he? T- uh, if he want to fight these PBC fighters, why is he signing with Bob again? So you got you you know you got the promoter side of the uh, 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 the point, and you got the fighter. Yeah, I don't think Bud is scared of none of them. But if he really wanted to fight them, and he knew Bob wasn't gonna make those fights, that second time he signed with top rank. I mean, that just let me know he don't really want to fight these dudes over here. He could have easily went somewhere else that would make make the fights easier to be made. So, and then far as uh, you right, it, it, the point you're making with Keith not wanting to fight uh, 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 Earl, and then now Earl don't want to fight uh, Boots or Earl don't want to fight. I think Earl should fight Keith because he's still a like you say he brings people to the seat. That'll be a good good pay-per-view fight and you know far as boots i mean that's i think he shouldn't i don't think he should fight boots right now let boots get come on get when he go up to 54 boots come and take over then boots can easily go to 54 work himself to 54 and 47 i don't think earl got too much longer at 47 he's been there what 10 years you know he struggled to make weight I mean, that's on him, but I think he can. But if he say he can't make 147, then that's that's what he say. I have to take his word for him. Everything he done said he was going to do, he's been doing it. I'm going to clean up my side. That's what he did. Even after the accident, the eye thing, he cleaned up his side. Now, you heard what he said when he got Ugas up out of there. But I'm coming for the MF belt. So now it is no talk. Yeah, Bud a little older, but Bud still can fight. Bud top five. To me, he top five. He's number two. To me, number two. Welterweight. Even though he ain't got had no got no good resume at, at welterweight. Yeah, he fought Sean. Sean that didn't come in the ring in, in, in good in great condition like he usually do. He fought a Kell Brook that was I read his both his eyes messed up. So, so did uh, I, I, I mean, I have, it, it, I have to interject one, one thing, Gerald. I have to interject before I forget it. Do you see this box rack up right now? Go to the date on the box rack, y'all. It's in the it's in the far left corner. As and look for the date that's closest to September 9th, 2018. What do y'all see? You say December. Hit. December yeah, Dece- no September 9th, 2018. What is the closest date to September 9th, 2018? Who box wreck is this? This is Sean Porter's box wreck. Okay. I said, Do you want to fight? 
I, I showed you a video. Showed you that's what I was asking you. I showed you a video. Um, I probably didn't see it. Yeah, it was at the beginning of the show. But yeah, I, I was the video. Um, that Earl Spence had on a blue sweater. It was dated September 9th, 2018, where he was talking about Bud been calling all of us out. I got that. Yeah, and you said, was well, Sean Porter got a belt? No, at that time he didn't, or he just got it because he fought for the vacant belt on the, the day before. Yeah, so, he did. Yep. So Sean Porter did not have a belt. It wouldn't have been on Earl's mind. He wouldn't have been on um, Crawford's mind. Not at that time. Because if he won that belt, and he won the fight, so he just had it for one day. So when he's saying, when Earl is making a statement of Bud is calling all of us out, certainly he's not thinking Bud is calling somebody who's not a champion out. And mind you, uh, it was the year before when, when Bud, or a year or so before, when Bud got the belt from Jeff Horn. So, so when Crawford came to the division, he was calling out all the top dogs. They didn't want to fight him. They were okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. When he came into the one at 147, he was still under top rank, wasn't he? When he came in at 147, yes, he was still at top rank. That's what I'm talking about. I he yeah, I, I remember him calling them out, but at the same time, you gotta understand Bob wasn't gonna make those fights, man. He Who said he was? Was. what are you basing the off What are you basing the off who is the boss, Earl or Bob? Who decides? You mean Crawford or Bob? Bob is the Bob is the one that Bob is the one that puts the money up for the fights. If he but, don't put that money up, he's not going to make those fights. And Crawford okay. knew that because well, he told you. I got to refer you back to that video. None of them is Mayweather. None of them, only saying, Mayweather. Hold on, hold on. Earl said, "I'm the A side." Now, both of him and Crawford had one belt apiece. Now, would you agree that the A side is the people who put up the money and make the fight happen? It's in the first term sheet and got the leverage. In the and not to mention, he said he was his own boss. Yeah. So I mean, he, yeah, you can say that, but if if you're not putting up. If you're not putting up your money for your own fight, then you're not the boss. Because the 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 mm -hmm. one that's putting up the money is is controlling who 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 putting up the money is controlling everything basically. But I, at the same I time, at the same that. at the same time, I'm just saying, I do not think Crawford was scared of nobody over on PBC side. I'm just saying what Bob said out his own mouth. Crawford do not sell. I'm not going to put no whole bunch of money up. And then he was trying to lowball people, you know, give, he tried to get Sean, what, a million dollars to fight Bud the first time Bud, they was going to fight. And then the, it, it took another year and a half for them to fight. He, he, it, he, was, it, trying, it, he was trying it, to it, lowball it, it, and then they gave Khan ten million dollars. They gave Khan ten million. They gave Khan ten million. This is all cat. Listen. Sean Porter, see, this is what they do. They confuse information, right? When it came to the Sean Porter situation, Sean Porter came out probably the same year that he fought Terrence Crawford and said, oh, Bob Aram, if you offer me $1 million, don't lowball me. I won't be like that. I, I'm not up I'm not up to that. Bob, Bob didn't even offer him anything. Sean Porter just came out of his mouth and said, if he offers me $1 million, then that's not right. Considering that Sean Porter only got two million to face Earl Spence, and he had a belt. Sean Porter got his career high payday with Terrence Crawford, and he had no belt. Then on top of that, this whole Amir Khan got ten million. No, he didn't. Amir Khan only got paid five million dollars for the fight. Terrence Crawford got paid five point five million dollars for the fight. But then again, you know, I ain't trying to watch people's pockets. I just don't like when people spend narratives and stuff and start making up these joints. Keith Thurman won a $10 million to fight Terrence Crawford. Danny Garcia was offered a $2 million contract, and he turned it damn down. Like, he, he didn't, none of these dudes want to fight it. Terrence Crawford tried to fight Sean Porter back in, in 2018. Sean Porter was also on that, well, you know, you got to go do something at, at welterweight first. But 
and the same thing with Earl Spence, but when it came to Mikey Garcia, he ain't got to say, Mikey Garcia ain't had to do shit. Mikey Garcia had come up two weight classes, and he ain't had to do a damn thing to get a 50-50 split. But when it comes to Terrence Crawford, 60-40, 70-30, whatever we decide to give him, don't make me 80-20 a nigga. He like all this, all this fucking cap and shit. Just because the motherfucker was trying to avoid Terrence Crawford the whole time. And we got hide behind streets and everything else and, and all that other stuff. But that's that's it, that is what it is. I mean, the man, the man did not want to fight them. He 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 wanted to, he had more energy to try to fight Jeff Horn. But when Bud got the belt, he had zero energy. And that's that's the just the bottom line. That's just the truth right there. Mateo Pantangeli, welcome to the building. E Dog, welcome to the building, Kings. Um, I just want to make sure I get the shout out to everybody. Uh, to recognize you because I so appreciate you coming in. E Dog said, What about the offer Bob made to Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman? And, uh, Mateo said, Thurman unified both belts before Spence even had one. And um, E Dog said, Bob made an offer to Thurman and Danny Garcia. Laugh out loud. And then um, E Dog said, Thurman asked for 10 million. Danny Garcia went and fought someone else for less money. So all I was saying is, uh, Carol. I feel what you're saying. I, I I actually understand. Like I said, you explain yourself a lot better than most uh, Spence fans or people who see his perspective. Um, I just think a lot of times when you throw a lot of stuff at the wall, a lot of stuff stick and people is missing, you know, integral parts. Like, like for instance, um, I, I try not to get into the money fight, the money part of it, uh, Gerald. But, you know, you guys have heard from different um, channels of that bud um asking for 20 million and i was like well i didn't hear spence saying i didn't hear bud say it i didn't hear nobody in their camp say it so i have to say that's not true but even if i took it as true isn't there an omission with this story because you make it sound like they make it sound like bud just say i want 20 million and spence was like give me my normal 1.5 million um but that's not the case. A, if Bud asks for $20 million, there's a reason. But we won't know the reason, and we can't really pontificate on it because we don't know the whole story. If Bud asks for 20 well, the other part of the story is what the Earl asks for. I'm supposed to believe these, these channels or these fans who do not like Bud have shown that they don't like Bud. They got his number on speed dial. Bud is running to tell them something. or is there a mold in Bud's camp or a mold in Spence's camp? Or maybe Spence is calling them directly and saying these things, which always come out to be not true. And Bob, you made a good point when Bob said what he said. Yes, if we're going to hang on Bob's words, let's hang on all of them. Bob also told Earl, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, you know, it's a smart thing. You might not pretty much want to get in the fight with uh with Terrence. You might not want to do that. You know, that's what Bob said to him in that hallway. And Bob paid Terrence more money than PBC paid Earl Spence and, and, and any other welterweight, no matter who they was with. Terrence Crawford was the highest paid welterweight. And Bob graduated from Harvard. He knows who make him money, who doesn't make him money. And everybody hear that and they believe it. Instead of saying, hmm, I wonder why Bob said that. Maybe Bob was mad because he kept probably coming at, at Terrence a year out. You're going to resign. You're going to resign. Terrence was blowing them off. And Terrence won't go resign. So Bob already showed you he gets mad. But then what happens after Terrence fired him publicly after the Porter fight? What did Bob anchor for? What did he angle for? He was angling for Josh Taylor and Terrence. But this is the man who don't make you money. So why would you ever, Harvard grad, want to do business with a man who don't make you money? Unless that was BS. It had because it's in-house and he making money on both sides. That's why. If he do business with PBC, he got to split that. So he's not going to make those PBC fights knowing that he's going to have to split that big purse. That's how. That's why he's do, he's doing that. That's why they, all of them do that. That's why PBC do that. They keep it so, in house because they get money on both sides, win or so lose. Can I ask you this: Did you hear the uh, statement that Tim Brown, I think was it Tim Brown or whatever, 
the guy from uh PBC. Yeah, it's Trent Brown. About Bud, Trent Brown. Made about Bud earlier this year. Did you hear that, Gerald? No, I didn't hear it. Well, there's a video out. I'm sure you still can find it through Google or YouTube. But Tim Brown expressing his views on the PBC's positioning or stance when it comes to Bud. Never did they ever in the past, present, or future did they want to fight with Bud. They feel like they didn't want to disrespect him. He 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 won't work where Bob was paying him. They never was going to do a fight. And that's what they said. And I will ask you, did you ever hear the interview that uh, Earl Spence did with Black Fight Fan where he was talking about how he corresponds with Al Heyman, who is his manager? Right. Did you ever hear that? I think I've seen that, but I mean, you good, you you good with that, but I, yeah. I think it's more like I, I'm not trying no. to. Um, no, no, no. I'm, like, trying, to make I'm not trying to make it like a like it's because it's like it's it's two sides of it. It's the promoter side, which I don't like how they do business sometimes, but I mm-hmm. understand it because they try. They got to make their money. If they put that money up, they got to make sure they're gonna get their their money back or however they do it. But I'm just saying, far as like, I don't think Earl ever was ducking Bud, that's, and I don't think Bud was I, ever ducking ducking Earl. Yeah. I don't think I they always. I ducking. always believe. I always believe that Bud always wanted to fight Earl because he knew Earl was coming up. He knew Earl was going, you know, be somebody to reckon with. And Bud getting older. Yeah, if Bud would have fought him two, three years ago, it would have been a more competitive fight. I think right now, I think I get an edge to uh, Earl because I just think Bud, you know, he just, his competition. It, I just ask anybody, just so, go so, study, so, study so, his box rec. Just study on, his hold box rec. Hold, hold on, Gerald. The point I was trying to make with when I asked you, did you see that interview that Black Fight fan had with Earl four years ago? Earl explicitly told you how business get down for him and his manager. As we all hear that Earl always say, I'm my own promoter. So we, and then you believe the same thing I believe. Unless you put up your own money, you're not your own boss. So we both say and miss us with that. I think all three of us on that same page. But Earl basically said, I talked to Al. He sits down and talked to me about my career. He, we talk about where we're going to go next and this, that, and the other. And you heard in the video about that far back, four years ago, Earl said, Crawford been calling all of us out. So if Crawford sits down with Al, who's his manager, and they talk about their career and this, that, and the other, and we heard earlier this year what Tim Brown said about uh, PBC's positioning on whether they fuck with Bud or not, which they don't fuck with him, because that's basically what he's saying. So my question for a long time has been, did Earl know PBC's stance when it comes to Bud? So I'm asking you that question right now. Did Earl Spence know that PBC had no intentions to ever make a fight with Bud? I ain't say Earl make, make the fight with Bud. I'm saying PBC's intention on ever making the fight with Bud um, what do you think about that? I think, yeah, because they knew Bud wasn't putting people in the seats. So you that, think Earl knew that? So that's what you're saying? I mean, everybody knows that because uh, if if your if if Crawford's own promoter says something like that, and then and they look at numbers don't lie. If they go look at the numbers, I hate that side of the business because that stops a lot of great fights from happening when they're supposed to happen. But at the same time. That's the that's the promoter side of it, you know what I'm saying. But the so far as the was, fighters, far as the was, fighter sides of it, they always wanted to fight each other. No, 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 no. What I'm asking is important, and 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 I so applaud you because you I could tell you're an honest broker. You just said that Earl knew PBC stance on Bud four years ago. That's on on top rank, on t- I say no, top no, rank. No, 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 no. That's not the question I asked. I asked, in light of what Tim Brown said earlier this year, and he works for PBC, he will know. He right. he basically stated that PBC I think it's, I think it's no Tim, Tim Smith. Tim Smith. Tim, Tim Smith. I'm sorry, Tim Smith. 
I'm mixing two people up together. Tim Smith. So he basically stated that PBC ain't got no business for Bud. We ain't trying to fuck with Bud. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, we ain't trying to pay Bud. We we had no intentions of making a fight. They with ain't Bud. trying to pay That's Bob. It. I say they ain't trying to pay Bob. No, 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 no. Because the fighters get paid as well. We know the promoters do, but the fighters get paid. Tim Smith didn't say Bob. He said he said Bud. They have no intentions of making a fight with Bud. They never did, and they never will. That's PBC positioning. I asked you, did you think that Earl knew? Because according to Earl four years ago, Al Heyman and him talk about any and everything about his career, where to go next, and this, that, and the other. And then according to the video I played that was four years ago, Earl Spence said, Terrence Crawford been calling all of us out. So then I asked the question. Did Earl Spence know that PBC had never had an intention to make a fight with Bud? And since Earl Spence worked for PBC, that means no fight. So then I have to ask, what was this last four years about? Did Earl Spence really want the fight? And before you answer that one, because Earl Spence can emphatically tell PBC to their face and everybody to their face, Keith Thurman ain't getting the fight. And they both under the same umbrella. So Earl Spence got, got that kind of authority. Then you got Tom Brown, the guy who makes the fight at PBC, say it's always up to the fighter. Even the four-year interview ago, Earl Spence said, I got the final say. So in the end of the day, I got to wonder, what was this last four years about? All this... I Okay, I can okay. answer that. I I go gotta go back. I gotta go back to. I gotta go back because you talk. You when you bring PBC in, they said it, but PBC they're not gonna go de deal directly with Crawford on no fight because they know his promoter is Bob. Okay, if if Crawford would have left top rank four years ago, he probably could have no negotiated a fight with Earl earlier, but. When you say PBC said that about, do well, we ain't making no fight with Bud, and Bud not his own boss, and they can't go directly to Bud and make a fight, they got to go to Bob. And then you got Bob saying, Terrence Crawford don't sell fights. You know, I waste money on I waste money on him. Like you said, do I really believe that? No. He he could have been he could have been matching uh Bud up with PBC fighters if he really wanted some money because he could have came over here and been stopped uh uh Sean Porter. He could have been came over here and stopped uh uh Danny Garcia, and then he could have been fought Keith Thurman if Bob really wanted to make some money. But you know that friction with Bob and PBC top rank. That's that Mayweather stuff. Mayweather been told everybody about Bob, how Bob tried to shit on him. He didn't want his black fighters to make this and make that. Everybody know that. So I'm thinking Earl, you know, Earl is a militant person. You know what I'm saying? He really about that militant stuff. And if he think a motherfucker, like, I mean, I'm excuse my language, but if you think you good, Bob you is on some, you Bob, you know, if you notice Bob, he pay more attention to his European fighters and his other fighters. See, all that stuff got to be in play when you talk about these fighters not fighting each other. It's it's not just the fighters don't want to fight each other. It's the promoters stopping the stuff. It's the money. Uh -huh. It's the networks and all that stuff. So uh -huh. I, I never, I never thought, I never thought Bud was scared of nobody on the PBC side. He just had bad promotion. He didn't know uh -huh. how to. Uh -huh. he, didn't, he couldn't get them to hey, make I'm, them. Let me say something. Let me say something. I'm gonna let Tay cook. Hey, be serious. We got a nice conversation going. But um, Jared, yeah, I'm going to let you serious. think about it. Hold and then I, I want you to answer that question. Oh, my God. I got somebody calling I can't, me. I can't, I'm going to tell you now. I can't say if Earl knew or, or not. I don't know. I wasn't there. I met Earl in a barbershop. I, you know, I see him running down the road all the time. But I ain't never asked him that. You know, maybe next time I see him up in Big T's, I'm going to ask him. Man, what's up? Why you didn't fight him earlier? I asked him. Hold on, hold tight, y'all. I got a call. I ain't had a call in a minute. Hey, how you doing? Um, four one zero. Uh, what 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 you say you? <laughs> you called hey, in. How you doing? Hey, yeah, this is Jerry. This is Jerry calling from Baltimore. Oh, what's up? What's up, B more? Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the Bud Crawford Errol Spence fight. Uh, I gotta set a few things straight right off the bat. The 
the first thing is this. Bud Crawford signed three deals with Bob Arum. He fought for top I knew three. Yeah. Years. He, he willingly, on his own, own accord, signed three deals with Bob Arum. Nobody twisted his arm to do that. And during that time, especially when he was a welterweight, if you look at Bud, uh, Bud Crawford's purses, Bud Crawford got paid more than any other welterweight, not named Manny Pacquiao, fighting for Bob Arum. Nobody made more money than Bud, even though you could argue that the PBC welterweights had a better better resume than he did at welterweight because they were fighting each other. So Bud probably had the weakest re uh, resume at 147, yet he got paid the most. Okay, Bud Crawford didn't fire Bob Arum. Bob Arum did not offer him a fourth contract. That's what happened there, and that's why Bud Crawford is trying to sue Bob Arum. There's no reason to believe that yes, wouldn't have signed again with Bob Arum because he had already signed three times prior and fought for Bob for 11 years. That Bob Arum is not the reason that the fight with Earl Spence didn't take place, and it should be obvious by now that Bud Crawford's been without Bob Arum, and they still can't make the fight. Bob Arum was never really the problem outside of it being a cross-promotion fight. Those are almost impossible to make. They rarely ever happen. There has to be giant, giant money on the fight for any of these promoters to cross-promote. That's PBC, Top Rank, Dazzin, De La Hoya, everybody. They don't look to cross-promote their fighters. And Bob Arum was, was not in the way of the fight, and he's not in the picture now, and he still can't make the fight. The reason they can't make the fight is a simple reason. The fight ain't got no real money on it. Okay, I have to interject. I have to interject, sir. Uh, what's your, what, you want, what name do you want to go by? I don't want to get a mic. Jerry, okay. All right, Jerry. So I just I just want to make sure I, you know. Um, okay. So, Jerry, um, so the suit that Bob Aram got, you're telling me that that suit isn't about a breach of contract? I read the, the manifesto that was on that. Uh, that we read uh, the court papers. All of us did. Yeah, that's what I, I read also. They were they were on the, uh, uh, going around on the net, and I read it. On the very first page, it may, it, may, it mentions race, which I'm not even going to get into that. There's yeah, we don't have to get into it because that's not what the suit is about. I, it's about breach of contract. About, okay, so your question is what exactly? I said, you know, I actually it wasn't about breach contract because because I'm under the from what I read, Bob Aram signed whatever kind of contract they had, an extension, whatever. It stated, okay, you're gonna get me the Earl fight, and if you don't, you gotta pay me nine hundred thousand dollars. Well, Bob didn't live up to that. He didn't do it, so this is why they in court. Also, it said you gotta have two fights per year, and and you know he Bud had his minimum, uh. That Bob had to pay him per fight, and he didn't give him one of his fights. So Bob Aram owes him money. This is what that suit is about. Nobody makes the argument, as far as I know, but on, on the Bud side of the equation, that um, Bob Aram didn't get the fight. Bob Aram shouldn't have signed a contract with somebody about some stuff he couldn't do. And that's between well, I, Bud I and, and, and Bob. Aram. Well, I can assure you, Bob Aram has been going for half, half a century, 50 years. Mm -hmm. He's got the biggest name on fighters in the business. There is no way. He's also a lawyer. There is zero chance that Bob Aram guaranteed in contract that he would get Bud Crawford a fight with a fighter that he doesn't control. He's not that stupid. Hell, uh, elementary school kid in it kid is not that stupid. Bob knows that he can't force PBC to make Earl Spence fight Bud Crawford. He would never guarantee him that. Now, I'm sure he hey. probably told him, I'll try to get you to fight. I'll hey. try to do it. Hey, Jerry, I, I, I hate to interrupt. I hate to interrupt. People are saying they can't hear. Can you guys hear Jerry? In the I hear him. I mean, I, I can barely hear him. He's really low. Oh. So Jerry, speak up. Yeah, he is low, but I mean, I, he can barely he's hear you. Cap too, you know. Yeah, he is. The <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll speak a little louder, and, and what I'll, I'll tell you again, Bob Arum, no way guaranteed. Guaranteed. Now we're talking contractually guaranteed. That man is not that stupid. He doesn't control Errol Spence. He cannot make PBC make Errol Spence fight Terrence Crawford. And why he put it in the contract? 
No, I mean, we don't know that he did, and I would, I would, I would bet everything. We I do know that he did, did because we saw the court papers saying that that he was suing for that. No, it doesn't say in there that that Bob guaranteed him that fight. I mean, think about it. It, it says it says in a, 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 a lawyer and a promoter for fifty years. Just from a common sense standpoint, we know enough about boxing to know that a promoter is not going to guarantee you a fight against a fighter that he has no control over. Hell, well, they apparently, he did. They won't even guarantee you a fight over a fighter that they have in their own stable because a fighter can turn down a fight, just like the CNG Furman. Oh, oh, Mr. Steve, ask him. Ask him. Does he know exactly what was said in that uh those documents? Because obviously, Bob wouldn't be getting sued if that wasn't the case. I think he the can hear you. Are lengthy, and and there there's a lot of uh, of stipulation in there, and one of them is what what what. Uh, the lady spoke about about there being a, a fight that he didn't get, and, and okay, that is, is believable. There, it could be a scenario where uh, maybe maybe there was one fight that he didn't get, or some money outstanding. This happens all the time, but right? there's no way he guaranteed him that he was going to get him on their offense fight because he can't. Right, right, him. but in, in in a document, in a document, he did guarantee it. And if he wasn't going to get the fight, what was supposed to happen? You said no. We saw otherwise. What did you see read, that we're not privy to? I read the document. So, okay, did we. so, so if, if you read the document, explain the part where it said if he couldn't get Earl Spence, what would happen? It says it, it speaks to a language of monetary compensation, something like a million dollars. And 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 Bud Crawford did get one payment of a million dollars when the, the Spence fight didn't materialize and there was some monetary compensation. It didn't did he get you. all his payments is the question, Jerry. If he didn't get all his payments, then Bud has a case. That's all we're saying. Know. I, that part, I don't know. I don't right, know none of us. If there's some money money outstanding there. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some, some money. It's possible. I think, that, I think that was the Manny Pacquiao fight. Dollars. And a lawsuit is for $10 million and that that compensation beyond what was contractually agreed but you know what and in the end of the day jerry i hate to interrupt you we gonna all find out when they have the, the case as far as i know as far as i know once the court is done and they decide because it'll be public record uh as far as i know um a a, a a judge is not going to take a case that don't have standing you know that you sound like a a guy that's smart you can bring a case no matter what, if you're willing if to it pay don't attorneys, have standing, come on, come on, you, Jerry. If you're willing to pay attorneys, you can litigate anything. Jerry, but if it don't have standing, a court is not going to waste their time. Come on, Jerry. Yes, they will. No, they don't. It's part of, of, of contractual dispute. If, if he feels he has a dispute and he's willing to pay attorneys to dispute it, the courts will hear it. And, and you talking that about doesn't mean he's going to win, and it doesn't mean he's going to lose, but certainly they will hear it. And we'll find out how it works out. Now, right. in the wake of it, we just seen not that long ago, a couple months ago, where was Bud Crawford at? He was right with Shakur Stevenson at the at Bob Bob uh, top rank. We we all we all get it though, Jared. That that Bud signed. I wouldn't have signed with being a black woman. I wouldn't have signed with Bob because I feel like he has he don't see a lot of value in black folks. I mean, there's different degrees and levels of racism. But I personally well, wouldn't have would, signed. Would sign? But um, would, if, that, if that was the case, well, to control to control him? his favorite fighter maybe he don't want but to have to face one of the fighters he want to put up why did he have pack um mayweather and and de La Hoya? why did he always big up de La Hoya and not mayweather bob said himself he don't know how to uh advertise and and put up on you know spruce up black fighters he don't know how to promote them or and all that so why do you no, sign them no 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 he did he, he did not say that that's what he did say he said he said he made a mistake with floyd mayweather which he, he did say that has promoted the greatest fighters from ali ray leonard and George foreman and he has a problem the and he has there a problem no with way, black fighters there ain't no way you're gonna tell me that he's gonna sign a black fighter and not want to make money on a black fighter he doesn't care well he, he didn't want to make okay actually let me ask you this why didn't he put um crawford on regular 
pay-per-view. Why go through that app that he only put Crawford? He didn't put Tyson Fury on there. He didn't put none of his other fighters on there until after Crawford left. He, Crawford was the only one on that app. That only happened one time, but Crawford was on two other pay-per-views where he failed and failed miserably. And it wasn't on an app. And if you haven't noticed, most of these most of these pay per view streams are done by ads nowadays. That's a weak excuse from Crawford's camp as to why that fight didn't. That's not a. That's not I'm, a, a I'm not offering it as an excuse. I'm just wondering why you only put Crawford on it. You didn't put Tyson well, Fury let me, on let it. Let me ask you a question. And since it's about race, why has the PBC oh. never offered Bud Crawford a dime? I didn't say why? it's all about race. And and you well, think? But, but, hold on, hold on, Jerry. Have, let me answer it. You really think that I think that Al Heyman is really the money man behind everything? He, he run that shit with hedge fund companies. There's a lot of other races of people who's invested in PBC. He he got the answer for that money that he gets from investors who are probably all white. And you think their investments are made based on 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 race? Like we no. don't like black people, so we're not going. No, to no. I said black that Bob Arum. See, you you're moving the the goalpost. I said that Bob Arum has a problem promoting black people. He said as much. He also has a non-black policy and not what is it NBF policy? The non-black fighters. He do. He does. He never, do I he think? Do I think he's an outright Ku Klux Klan? Blatant racist like that? No, I think he's uh, he's a man of his generation. Okay, and I don't hate Bob. I feel like he is of his generation, and he may look at black fighters and don't see value in. He he just and might. This is the problem sign, that Floyd had with him. You just sign black fighters like Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, because because to his last fight. you he want to because to you fight. want to make sure. They don't fight well, no, your no, no, favorite no, no. fighter no, no. like Lomachenko. No, nah, Lomachenko gets paid like $2 million a fight, if that. Wow. He's not even that popular of a fighter. And he, so don't even, no he hasn't even done a paper. There's, no, there's no case to make that Bob Arum has done something great for Lomachenko because Lomachenko doesn't even make what Bud Crawford makes. Lomachenko is, is not that popular. He ain't did what Bud did. Paychecks, and his paychecks reflect that. Bud Crawford's problem is, just like Marvin Hagler was never as popular as Ray Leonard or Thomas Hearns, Bud Crawford is not as popular as Earl Spence. He's just not that popular. He's a great fighter, one of my favorite, personal favorite fighters, but uh, he's just not that popular of a guy. And that's so, how it goes. Sometimes. So why did Bob still angle that he wanted to put the fight together with Crawford? If Crawford is an albatross over Bob's head, he don't make money. I wouldn't want to have nothing to do with him. Business wise, don't that make sense? Yeah, that's why he didn't offer him a fourth contract. And why was he asking them to do the fight with Josh Taylor after the so called, you said it wasn't a firing? I call it a firing. He didn't choose to get back with him. Well, he wasn't offered a contract to do so. But Bob the made it look like he was one of him. The three times prior that he was offered a deal, he took it all three times. And uh -huh. there's no reason to believe that he wouldn't have took the fourth contract, but he wasn't offered a fourth contract. But Jerry, and you sound like you, you close to the situation. Can you tell me how you know he wasn't offered a, another contract? Because it kind of looked like he was when he was trying to angle him for the Josh Taylor fight. But you, you sound like you might know. And being, uh, but how, like and what's your sources? Contract is two different things. What's your sources? None of us know that. We would know about it because things are things we like don't, that. But we don't know. Nowadays. But we and don't know. We don't know. We are just fans. All know, of us, even you, even you, you're just a fan. You might be more than a fan. I don't know, Jerry. But uh, as far as I know, you're just a fan. So we're not in the room with Bob and Terrence to even know if they offer the contract. I highly doubt you got Terrence Carfer's number that you could talk to him and say, hey, did Bob give you that? You know, offer you another contract, and you probably don't got Bob's number, but maybe you do. Maybe you're gonna tell me you do. So I'm, I'm no, all no, ears. No, I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna tell you that. But I'm gonna tell you this: mm -hmm. the, the angling, the little bit of angling he did for him to fight Josh Taylor, that started before Bud's contract was was mm -hmm. up, and that has a lot to do more with Josh Taylor. They were gonna host the fight and over there where Josh Taylor's at because he can he can pack a stadium over there, much mm -hmm. like Cambodia does. 
and 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 <laughs> those guys are national heroes in those little smaller countries, and they get packed stadiums. And he told Bud, <laughs> rightfully so, if you're going to make yeah, any call, Cam Moose is a national hero <laughs> because seeing right now that the, the the Errol Spence fight, which is the most highly anticipated fight in, in boxing between the two of them, is apparently not a money generator to the point where it can pay Bud Crawford what he feels is fair. I, see, I can't let you say that. You sound like a PBC guy. Because that, that fight between Earl and Bud is going to be the biggest. biggest, Probably bigger than AJ and Usyk. And when did Camboso stack a, a pack of stadium? Well, apparently PBC, who is in the business of pr promoting fights and making money doing it, mm -hmm. they don't agree with you. If that fight had big money on it, we the fight would be signed by now. The reason the fight's not signed is because the money's not there. They're not disputing what size the ring should be or the gloves. The problem is the money is not there. But the money That's is not there for Canelo to give him $40 million neither. The money yes, wasn't yes. there. The money wasn't there for Earl Spence and with Dennis Ugas, but they still made the fight, right? Yeah. To fight an unknown yeah, but... fighter in plant, they paid Canelo fifty. But trying to price himself out. But they ain't got twenty five <laughs> to put on this fight. They got the money to put on it. They they had all the money in the world to give Canelo. Canelo ain't make that money for them. He ain't double their money. He didn't he didn't make a Bud, whole lot. Bud biggest purse was six million. If he get ten million out of this fight, he should take it. <laughs> how, how did you know? How do you know? See, Jerry, I think you secretly in the know. But I, I think you secretly in the know. You need to go ahead and tell us your sources, Jerry. Jerry, or just tell us you the big man on campus. This is how anyone can know. It's a common sense way to know. After Canelo fought that fight for PBC, mm -hmm. they turned right around and offered him a hundred million dollars for two more fights. They're not. Going Did to he make at, enough money, Jerry? Yes or no? They're not going to throw money at a losing effort. You know, they're not in the business of losing cryptic. money. So Dazen then paid him $160 million for three fights. Do you think that these entities are just throwing money at something? I that think they, they, yes, they I think they the give money. money to who they want to. I think when Bob Aaron tells Shakur Stevens, ain't nothing, ain't nothing big about getting undisputed at 130. Why would you tell a fighter? It's all about your career. And at the end of the day, you're going to be left alone with yourself and the stuff that you did for your fight. Why should we care what an old man say or any man who ain't lacing the gloves up, putting the work in, get in into the ring themselves? Why should why should what they think matter over what the actual fighter does? Why would you tell? What kind of advice is that? Excuse me. You see, that's why. That's why you have to care. You don't have to like it, but you have to care because they were the, they the ones who are fighting. The fight doesn't make money. It's the promoter that loses money. And it's just like your partner said. These promoters are not in the business of throwing money when they don't think they're going to get the money back and they're not going to make a profit. That had to be like something. He's going to fight Mikey Garcia. Yeah, undisputed is overrated. You asked Josh Taylor what being undisputed really is. Walk down the street in the United States, you'd be lucky if you could find one person in an entire city who even knows who Josh Taylor is. Bud Crawford can say something. He's undisputed, or he was. Hardly anybody knows who he is outside of hardcore boxing fans. Hold on, hold on, Jared. Jared, let me interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. I got to tell you, he's been on here off and on for a minute. I got to be fair. I so appreciate you calling in. Jerry, I think you're bigger than what you're letting us. you you playing, you playing the low low. But I think you I think you the big man on campus. That's Bob Aaron's assistant. That's <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a Bob Aaron guy. <laughs> I'm just saying, Jerry, it's all good. I so You can stay on, um, but I appreciate you. But let me be fair and get, let Tay get, get squeeze something off. You know what I'm saying? You can sit, you yeah. can sit tight and listen. But I so appreciate you. Tay, you got the floor. Well, first, I'm just going to talk about the situation right here. Talking about throwing money away and giving it to people. It was stated that his own lost $1.2 billion, and they contributed some of that kind of loss to Canelo fights. So I don't, like, I don't necessarily know what he's talking about, just throwing away money. They were throwing away money against Canelo, which is why they were no longer going to let him fight 
Maka booty because they were just losing money on fights and they made him fight. It's, but some people say when, oh, he he uh, channeled greatness trying to fight people. Mm-hmm. No, they were no longer going to pay for fights that were bad, like Caleb Smiths and stuff like that. But I kind of to... In other words, they was holding Canelo feet to the fire. Hey, Tay, hold on. Yeah. Jerry, you, you dropped off. You could have stayed on. I just wanted to give, you know, be fair and let Tay squeeze some off because uh, he's been back and forth. And then we can open it up. Everybody can talk to everybody. But go ahead, Tay. Um, and also, the, no, it's probably not happening because of money issues. What was the money issue between Wilder and Joshua getting that fight done? I mean, that was probably one of the biggest fights in boxing, and the fight still couldn't get done. And also, Joshua I mean, was scared. Oh, yeah, I mean, but according to him, it's just. Oh, I, don't, I don't believe that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Y'all got to take it. It was a fight. It was money was offered. Hold on, let's take it. Is go ahead, Tay. I want to. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll hit that situation after. But I want to talk about the video itself. That Thurman and Earl are the same as that person. I agree, this is facts. One thing, the two main differences is that, you know what I'm saying, Earl was a prospect at the time, you know what I'm saying, when he was calling out Keith Thurman. And he just only had one belt. Wow. Bud was an undisputed world champion, and he was a three division world champion. So I don't think that, like, like, I just don't think that, you know, I feel like that's the main differences between Errol and Keith. You know what I'm saying? Keith was getting caught up by a prospect. And also, Keith didn't, I mean, Errol Spence didn't lose like Keith. Errol Spence has been injured and has caused him not to fight. Same with Keith Thurman. It's just that during that time, Keith mm-hmm. Thurman lost to Pacquiao. Yeah. And, you know? Jerry is back with us. Oh, tight, Jerry. But yeah, that's it. Jerry can talk now. I always say that's all. Oh, okay, Jerry. Well, he, was, he was in the comment okay. section, but he was in the comment. Let me get some of these chat because I'm so far behind, and I like to recognize all of y'all. Ronald Finkley is in the building. I appreciate you for having me on your show. I gotta go. <laughs> all right, all right, Gerald. Thank you for coming right. in. Do come back. All right. Uh, and then Ann Steele is in the building. Was Bobby King? So Jerry, did you did you wanna? Add something to what Tay was saying, or both. Well, it's open now. Yeah. All of y'all can talk to each other. Yeah, I, I just want to say this real quick. Um, this uh, you know, the thing what it comes down to because when it comes when it comes to terms of uh Spencer Crawford, people are going to buy the fight regardless. This is the most anticipated fight. Even casuals are talking about this fight. Are you and sure? We know what the, the Spence and Crawford fight? Yeah, are you sure? About yeah, they that? definitely talk about this fight. It's the you when you got other boxes and top boxes talking about they want to see this fight, including mm-hmm. somebody like a Canelo, and Canelo has a whole bunch of followers. His followers gonna listen to what he say anyway. Mm-hmm. Even when he said this is the most anticipated fight, people gonna be like, "Yo, damn! Like, why hasn't this fight even happened yet?" The networks have been talking about this fight. I know ESPN been talking about this fight. So has, you know, the zone, showtime, and everything else. This fight is going to do numbers. It might not do the numbers of a Canelo fight, but it's going to do some numbers. It's definitely going to do some numbers because it's the most anticipated fight that's waiting to happen. So all this, you know, the crowd don't recognize who these guys. That's bullshit. Crawford got fans. Spence got fans. It's going to happen. Not a Sarah. Casuals, and if you listen to the uh, Leonard Ellerby, he put it honestly, and I got to give him credit for being honest. Casual boxing, the hardcore boxing fans here in the states don't make up for much, next to nothing. It's a sad commentary because I started watching boxing back when Ali was the champ. I came up uh, with the Hearns and Hagler and the golden era of boxing, and I remember. Right, hey Jerry, let me ask you this, Jerry: Have you ever tra- Have you ever been? How many countries have you been to? None. Okay, I've been to a lot of countries, right? Not that I'm trying to brag. And I'm telling you, all a lot of the countries that I've been to all been talking about this fight alone. Crawford and Spence. So whatever Leonard Ellerby is saying, that that's that's on him. Leonard Ellerby also said, you know, Canelo and Vivo only did 300 million pay-per-view buys and found out that this did like 600. So my thing is well, this. Leonard Ellerby would know he's, he's, he's deep into the business of promoting boxing, and, and he would know. 
Uh, Mayweather is proof positive of that. Boxing is not a popular sport in the United States. It's mm -hmm. way, but way but did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said, uh, Jerry? I said I've been to multiple countries and they're talking about Spence and Crawford. I've been to multiple countries. I'm not talking about just the United States. I have a question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, all I can tell you is this. The people that are in charge of making money on boxing and making fights like Bob Arum and PBC and Dazen, they haven't seen the value in making this fight. It doesn't mean it's not a great matchup because it clearly is. It doesn't. It's not bad commentary on either fighter because they're both great fighters. That doesn't mean it's a big fight. And apparently and clearly the problem is there's not enough money in the eyes of the people who have to invest the money to stage the fight. This is why the fight is not signed at this point. Bud Crawford is not afraid of Errol Spence, and Errol Spence is not afraid of Bud Crawford. They're fighters. The last thing they are is afraid. They probably go to bed every night thinking and dreaming about fighting each other. So but Jerry, they don't they don't finance the fight. Jerry, uh, we, we get that part we get that part. They're not the financiers. Um Jerry, but who is the A side between them well, two? You gotta make Errol Spence the A side. Okay. No no problem. No debate. No debate. I think we all can agree that he has more hardware and that he's the A side, correct? So we, we don't have a problem with that. Now being the A side, don't the A side send the term sheets? And, and start the negotiations off and all that, true or false. Yeah. So it's not yeah. Crawford's thing to do it. I mean, that if they want Crawford to do it, then, um, then of course, they relinquish in their A-side, and I don't think they want to do that. And, Jerry, I got to ask you this. Have you heard about Crawford signing with Intrabox and Bally's? Oh, I'm sorry. What was that last question? Have you heard about Crawford signing with Intrabox and Bally's? Sports. I've heard a couple of rumors about him signing with a couple of different outfits. Rumors uh, or facts? Because they put it on. I'm talking that the entity Bally's and Intrabox is the ones that put it out. Well, until he signs with somebody, it's not a fact. It, but it's only rumors. they said he signed, and he didn't. Well, he said. never came back and said that's not true. I'm talking oh, Intrabox and Bally said. I showed it in writing. You can Google yeah, that I too. Comment on that. I, I don't know about that. I didn't okay. know about that. That's my first hearing about that he signed with uh okay. with somebody. But it's better that he signed with a promoter while going to negotiate that Spence fight. Well, he's in partnership okay. with Bally's, which is really Fox Sports. So okay, well, we had fine. David Benavidez like sign with Showtime, right? Um, or some something like that. Somebody signed with Showtime. No, that was Boots. I'm sorry, Boots and his can represent um, Bud Crawford in the negotiations is a good thing. Because contrary to the belief of some, they say, well, Bud's a, a free agent, free uh, uh, promotional free agent. That's the last thing a fighter wants to be. That means you don't have a promoter to pay you to fight, and you don't have a network to air your fights. No fighter That's wants to Canelo. be in that position. That's Canelo. Yeah, now, if you're a big star like Canelo or, say, like Floyd Mayweather is, if you're on that level, then you don't need the promoters. A lot of people say, why don't these fighters just shit can the promoter and not have a promoter? They can't do that. The promoter is the one who finances the fight. But when you're as big as Mayweather or Canelo, you can finance your own fight. You don't have to have a promoter at that point. That's and true. That's part, true. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. There have been fighters back in the past who didn't have promoters, and they weren't even big at the time when they first started without having a promoter, and they became big. So we could say, like Roy Jones, Roy Jones ain't had no promoter, and he made he made his money off of promoting himself. Roy Jones was about 25 fights into his career and secured an HBO, long-term HBO. No, 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 we, we said, we said uh, promoters. We're not talking about networks. We're talking about promoters. Promoters, right? He 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 had just signed a long term HBO contract when he dropped his promoter. Prior and to that, he had no, we, but we 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 talk about promoters. Like right now, who who's a promoter of Boots Ennis? Boots Ennis doesn't have a promoter, right? He's a promotional free agent, right? Well, what they call promotional free agent is not exactly see, what people have to understand, and this is what a lot of people don't understand. And I don't want to come off like I'm preaching, but I'm I know. Are you I'm good, Jerry? You good? We 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 value this. 
Okay, well, what I'm trying to tell you is a lot of people don't understand that a fight promoter is not so much a promoter as he is a financer. And this is why. Let's say they make the Crawford Spence fight and the total purse is $30 million. Let's say Spence gets 20 and Earl gets 10. The promoter has to put $30 million cash in an escrow account in a bank marked for the fight. And that is what secures the fighters' purses. They will not fight, and their representatives, their lawyers, and their handlers will not allow them to fight unless that money is in that escrow account. And it can't be liquid assets. You can't put your house and your cars and your jewelry in there. You have to put thirty million cash. And this mm-hmm. is why fighters have promoters. They don't have that type of money mm-hmm. to finance the fights, and that's not the only expense. T.O. and the Cambosa, they had, that was a problem. Because Triller wasn't okay. putting it in the escrow. Yeah, we we know they okay, do this well, with all the fighters. Okay. Well, let, let, me, let me finish by saying okay. this is why fighters have promoters. They don't just pay a promoter 30% of their purse because they feel like doing it or they think that that guy's going to make them a star. Bob Aaron's a 90-year-old Jewish man. What can he do? What kind of song and dance can he do to make Bud Crawford, a young black man, popular? What's he going to make a rap video? And don't be in the, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jerry. And don't be in the promoting business. Because my understanding of promoting is promoting. You promote, you advertise, you bring people to the yard. If you can't do it, then you need to see life elsewhere. Correct? Yeah, well, see, that's and see, I, I like I like how, how Jerry tried to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. I like how Jerry tried to say, he tried to make, who are you going to make, uh, Terrence Crawford a, a rap video. He didn't make Vasily Lomachenko a rap video, but he has no problems promoting the shit out of fucking Vasily Lomachenko. So we 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 need to stop with the what he's Tyson, supposed to do. He's not years old. Tyson Fury <laughs> just asked for Jerry. Jerry, what you think about this? Let me let me hey Jerry. Hey Jerry, let me let me get your opinion on this. Tyson Fury just asked five hundred million dollars to come out of retirement. What you think about that? Is he foolish? Is he what? Is is Tyson very foolish? He asked for five hundred million dollars to come out of retirement. That means Bob got to come up with that. Pay much attention to what Tyson Fury says, because part of Tyson Fury is he's his own promoter, and this is the difference between a no Frank Warren and Bob Aaron promotes him. If you look at Adrian Broner, Adrian Broner talking about everybody, but what I said, Jerry. Adrian Broner is not nearly the fighter that Bud Crawford is, but Adrian Broner knew much better how to promote himself. And what did that culminate to? It culminated to him getting a whole bunch of big fights and making a whole lot of money. And, and while, partial what payments. Happened to, what, what happened to that money? And what happened to that partial money? payments. And his money being invested back into BBC. And they paying him like he a child. That's what yeah. it amounted to. When Bud got his check, he got his check. I'm saying don't move the goalposts. Tyson Fury is with uh, Bob Arum. Tyson Fury has spoken. I want $500 million. Now, is Bob going to jump to that? Well, I mean, listen, you can, I don't pay much attention to what um, Tyson Fury says because I, I know did. he's outlandish and he's outlandish for a reason. But he if he gets his way. When he says and does outlandish things, it's going to bring more attention to him. He and and you know, listen. I mean, he may say he wants five hundred million. Who knows if he if he get anything close to that? I doubt it. Um, but him saying it is just him being outlandish. The same way Adrian Broner would say and do outlandish things, it brought attention to him, and he didn't rely on um the guys at PBC. They don't do any more promoting than Bob Arum does. But, but do? I would say they this, say Jerry. Good things about their fighters, all, just like Eddie Hearn says good things about his fighters. All black, all black men do popular. not put on the show, though. And I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but that's what they're doing. There's black men, white men, um, um, Latino men, men, period. You have extrovert type characters and you have introvert type characters. But it seemed to be the way, you know, the extrovert type characters and black men, them the ones that get a little shine. It don't mean you get the best deal. I'm not saying that Bob is Ku Klux Klan racist. What I'm saying is with Terrence, the suit has nothing to do with what's going on right now, waiting on the fight. With PBC, PBC ain't no better than top rank. 
ain't no better than the zone. And all of a sudden, all of them got their perks and all of them got their drawbacks. The zone fighters, they never complain about getting paid. Bob Aram do make, you know, he do get fights for all his fighters. They they will fight. Uh PBC ain't paying them their whole check at the end of their D. You know, they do a D, they don't get their whole check and that A D tell it. And in the end of the day, we don't know why this fight is not getting made. All I can tell you is if you're willing to pay Canelo all of that money, who hasn't shown you or proven to you that he can make double that, then why you can't pay Bud and Earl? And for that matter, why you don't pay, why they don't pay PBC? Uh PBC don't pay uh uh, uh what's his name? Errol Spence in the double digits millions. What's taking that so long? Your partner, your partner with your, one of the guys there said a, a little while ago when I when I when I lost connection that Daz and um you know, talked about the deal that uh, Canelo originally made with Daz, and it was like eleven fight deal, couple hundred, three, four hundred million dollars, and that fell apart after a couple fights. Well, Daz and just just all just paid him a hundred and sixty million dollars for three fights. If they don't see the value in Canelo Alvarez, they're not going to throw a hundred and sixty million. Did they pay? See, see, you're talking they hyperbole. I have to stop you, Jerry. He hasn't gotten all that money yet. What he did get for this Bivol fight was $15 million. Let's keep the ballistic. He got 50, 50 plus million dollars. He got $15 million for fighting Bivol. Now, I'm trying to figure out how is that 15 going to get up to 160. I'm not saying he didn't sign that contract. I'm not saying that they're not going to pay him. But I think he's getting paid as he going along. But then when people put out the story, we have to be clear with that. Because people take that, Jerry. You know, not against you and not against me, but we have to be clear with what we say because people take that and run with it like he actually got the check for 160. He still have yet to earn it. Everybody knows that the the deal was three fights for 160 million by the end so of this year. So of course he hasn't got the full 160 million. Yeah. And I can tell you this right now: Canelo Alvarez hasn't fought for 15 million dollars in about seven or eight fights. He got over 40 million dollars for that fight against Bivol, and he's fixing to get over 50 million to fight Golovkin this in this third fight. When he fought Plant, PBC paid him 52 million. My point is this. These promoters and these guys that push that big money, they don't throw that kind of money to where they don't get it back and get it back with interest. They don't do it. They're not, they don't get to where they're at by throwing money away like that. And after, after they paid Canelo $52 million to fight Plant, who was an unknown fighter, they turned right around and offered him $100 million for two more fights. They're not going to do that. Unless they see the, the the value in doing it, so Canelo is a different animal, much like Floyd Mayweather was. Canelo brings revenue in ways that most boxing fans have no clue uh, about revenue uh, streams that he brings in through endorsements and advertisement. And, and oh, I know he got Hebo and Gatorade and all that the content. And I know Canelo got all that, but Canelo got to make that third fight by the end of this year, correct? Well, this is a reason why... You Appar know, apparently, they pushed that fight to next past. year, the third and fight. And the reason Canelo is not fighting Baval right away again is not because he fears Baval. He doesn't fear him. The reason he's not fighting him again is Eddie Hearn knows he's got to make that Golovkin fight so he can get some of the money that that you know that he's going he's laid out in that contractual agreement. But Canelo and Mayweather and guys like that, they're one percent of boxers we all know that the rest of the boxers have promoters and they pretty much have to do what the promoters say the best they can do is turn down fights they can't make fights you get a lot of fighters getting a lot of heat saying this guy's ducking that guy that guy's ducking this guy well guess what most of the times, 90% of the times, it's not the fighters who are ducking anybody. They'll fight anybody. It's, it's the promoters. If the promoters don't see the value in the fight, they won't make the fight. They're not, they won't invest in it. And boxing fans, it took me a while to learn, but I've known for years now because I've known some people in the business, and I know how it works on the inside, and I know that it's the promoters 
who, who finance the fights, and that's what their main job is. That's why fighters sign with promoters. They don't look at a 90-year-old Jewish guy and say, oh, I know this guy right here is going to get my name on the street, and he's going to be able to get me up amongst all the popular culture and make me popular. No, they know better than that. So Jerry, you know what they should do? I hate to interrupt, but um, I have to get in when I can, um, respectfully, of course. Um, what they should do as promoters, then they need to write a mission statement. I, I thought all businesses had a mission statement, and you should go by your mission statement because promoter is what it is. Promoting by any other name is still promoting. No, it, it is what it is if you take it at face value, but uh, like I keep telling you, they call them promoters because that's what they've always been called. Because back in the day, when boxing was really popular, as popular as baseball in the 30s and the 40s, they would bring a fight card to town, and people in the town wouldn't even know who the fighters were. It was just something to do. It was So the promoter would come to town a couple of weeks before the fight, and he would do just that. He would promote the fight, put flyers up on flagpoles, maybe have a little thing in the town square talking about it and promoting it. And, that, and so they were fight promoters. But really, since really since the 50s and early 60s, they were still called promoters. And people people take that at face value, but they're really financers. That's what they do. They finance the fights and they finance the fighters. And they don't make money on every fighter. That's another misconception. People think that if you're a fighter promoter and you got fighters, you just had them fight and you just flat out make money. Not the case. It's no different than any other business. From real estate to car sales to anything you want. Now, you don't make money on every single thing. Promoters have some fighters that they make money on hopefully they got a couple they make good money on then they got fighters that they break even on and then they got fighters down the rung that they have to invest in until maybe they can make money on them fight promoting is no different than any other business it's not just you just do it and you're just automatically successful and every fighter is a success marvin Hagler was never as popular as ray leonard he may have been as good as Ray Leonard, but he was never as popular. Ray Leonard got all the money. He got all the endorsement deals. And, and poor Marvin, as as good as he was, it took it until way late in his career, just like Bernard Hopkins, before he, he got popular. And that wasn't the promoter's fault. It, it, it's just that's how it goes. Everybody is, is just not going to be yeah, as it's about, popular. It's about that. who's sellable. That's why, that's why if you see my thumbnail, I said Keith Thurman and Earl Spence. It mirror images of itself as far as how they approach their career. That was the that was the topic of the show, Jerry. Um, you have said, and I believe you're an important man, Jerry. You ain't getting one over on me. <laughs> but um uh, I I think that um it's about the sellable, the sellableness of that, that particular fighter. Pete Thurman has that face, he has that sellable look that you know he could cross pollinate with any other type of groups of people or whatever he's relatable so he's going to be uh, a person that can sell and so this is why i think pbc do owe him a greater data too because when pbc just started out it was people like keith thurman ab wilder even leo santa cruz who made uh pbc what it is today and i do think if you're listening to ab um that pbc do do partial payments they probably still owe Keith Thurman money. So this rumor that Keith keeps asking for $10 million, unless the man himself says it, I don't believe it. But my question to you, and I'm going to let Bo ask you some questions, because you sound very knowledgeable, Jerry. I, I so appreciate you calling in. Um, Thank you. Do you think that um, Earl Spence sent the contract to Terrence Crawford? And y'all notice I said the word think. But go ahead, Jerry. What I would say is it's been weeks and weeks since since Bud Crawford's been a free agent. The fight itself between he and Spence has been talked about for three years. The, the suits at PBC know very well who Bud Crawford is. They know the type of numbers that he's, he's made. They know what he's achieved in boxing. They know everything they need to know, and they've known it for a long time. I don't know if they've sent him a formal contract, but I would guarantee you that they've discussed with him hard numbers about the fight. It's definitely been discussed. It's not like they're over there not knowing who each other is and, and 
and nothing like that. I don't think that PBC uh, doesn't want to fight for Earl Spence. They want to make him undisputed. They know that it, it, uh, Crawford has the last belt. The problem simply is, and it's just as simple as can be, is that Bud is not that popular. But he wants to get paid like a popular fighter. Sound, you I sounding like Tim him. Smith. That's not what I asked, Jerry. Let's stick to what I asked. Because, um, cause like I said, I give I you credit. You're a knowledgeable right. person, but you're going off on the tangent. You're conflating. I asked you, did you did you think that they sent the contract? So you don't think it. And you sound very knowledgeable and close to the situation. So suffice to say, everybody who say the contract was sent is full of shit. Can we both oh, agree I on that? Know. Yeah, I don't know if they said that. There we go. There we go. Bold, I'm going to turn it over to you. You got any questions for Jerry? Because this is interesting. My, my, my only thing is that I'm just trying to figure out where Jerry's getting all this information from, to be totally honest with you. Because uh, for him to say that Terrence Crawford is not a popular fighter, we could roll with that. But it, it's not like Errol Spence is a popular fighter either. So. Well, you're getting the pay per views. Errol Spence has had four pay per views, three of them sold over 300,000. The last one, I'm not sure. I heard the last one with the hundred. Two hundred and forty, uh, and he's been he's so three fifty with uh, Mikey, and been declining ever since to this last one. And, and not to mention that Dre Jones is the one been buying up a lot of a lot of Earl Spence stuff anyway to make it look like when, when you when you, when you're in partnership with a like a a, a a a owner of a football team, I mean, I'm quite I'm quite sure it's gonna it's gonna fluff your numbers up a little bit. <laughs> Well, I, I'm only going by what I heard, re, what was reported. 240000 uh, and, 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 and what was reported for Bud Crawford and his three pay-per-views, I think the biggest one did 130000 190, uh, I've heard 190, whatever. And also Bob put put him on his app, on the app that he didn't put nobody else on. The app, I'm not, listen, I make no excuse. Hear me, hear me out, Jerry. I make no excuse. But I will say that that app is not fan-friendly. And I don't understand when you could put him on regular pay-per-view. Because when I want to see a pay-per-view, I go to my cable remote, hit select, and boom, I'm in the house. But with the with the uh with that app shit, that shit was difficult. It was making people well, sign up for it. it was it was making people oh tight, it was making people sign up for a subscription that they didn't want. So instead of you should have did that, you should have put them on. Like you put Tyson Fury on. All you had to do is hit select, boom, you're in the house. But that's neither here or there. It don't matter. Earl Spence is not a pay-per-view star. So people need to stop saying that. At best, he is uh he 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 does better than his contemporaries. That's what we can say. Exactly. He's done three pay-per-views over three hundred thousand. But as far as I know, it's never did more than 130,000. And one, and the one pay per view, the first one only did like 50,000 from what I heard. Oh. But regarding his fight against Porter and the app, I ordered the fight that night. I had no problem ordering it. Yeah. It wasn't a subscription. You just go through the TV remote and you, and you click on the and app. And you have to talk, you Jerry. You have to talk to everybody else who said it was. And it wasn't that easy. Like it wasn't easy school. for me. They had an exclusive deal. So they they know. Ain't been on these channels a lot then because a lot of people did say it. We're not going to negate what you saying. Now I know going to negate what they saying. And I can tell you right now, it wasn't okay, easy. That's fine, but I didn't hear anybody say that they couldn't navigate a, 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 a remote control and, and press a button to order. That motherfucking device. shit was not easy. Trust and believe me. That shit did well, not I pop did, up. No it didn't pop though. up. It didn't pop up. And you were sitting there. I was. I, like when I try to bring up the Brown fight, and that didn't even cost nothing. I was hey, like, Jay, man, because I wound up getting a subscription. Hey, Dre, did you look. already did you already had ESPN Plus or something? Yes, I have ESPN Plus. I have oh, that's why. I got all of that. That's why but, it was easy for you. Well, it was easy to you because you already had the app. Mm -hmm. With 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 uh, Miss T is saying that it was difficult for people to order the fight because. A lot of people didn't even have the app, and that whole pay per view okay, thing was like something brand new. Against Gamboa and the other guy. But, but, but I mean, no this is all number. But, but see, the reason why I say Jerry is not even worth. I mean, you can talk about it. Ain't knocking nobody who do. I agree. Earl Spence had better pay per views than Terrence Crawford when they was offering a free fight. Terrence Crawford had three million viewers. 
Am I correct, Bo? Was when Amir Khan that wasn't that the case? Some one of them fights that he had on ESPN that was free. Three million people tuned in. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying at the end of the day, we do care about the numbers when it's attached to the dollars. But let's not act like we're talking about pay-per-view stars. Neither one of them come close to being a pay-per-view star. In fact, if we talk about all three, Thurman, Bud, and Arrow, Thurman had more pay-per-views than Arrow. Well, Thurman's only had one pay-per-view, and that was against Manny. So and it was really better than Arrow. You got to so give it to him. That because he fought Manny Pacquiao. Why you can't and count that? Yeah, I can't <laughs> count that, Jerry. He was on pay-per-view. On, man. <laughs> now, you can't count the Manny Pacquiao fight because Andre Berto did big numbers against Floyd Mayweather. But who do you think sold that fight? It don't, which, which, unless, y'all, unless y'all can go and quantify and qualify each person and say who they was for, you splitting hairs. It don't matter. The name on the marquee was it Thurman and Pacquiao. That's how they figure out who's getting paid what, and who's getting paid what is determines what how the fights get made, whether the fight gets made or not. So it absolutely it will go down. Who, who where the money is because with, with the money, that's what makes the fights. I mean, we've watched boxing long enough to know it's not like the NFL. In the but NFL, you, you can have a low budget team playing a, a, a high value team, a high market team, and at the end of the year. If those two teams are the best, they have to play each other. There's but no you question about but it. But we like talking, boxing, it's not we that putting way. them on a pedestal that they're not ready to have yet. Earl Spence is not a pay-per-view star. Neither is Terrence Crawford. So we never well, should, you, we shouldn't talk then. about pay-per-view then. Well, let me ask you this then. Now mm-hmm. that Bob Arum's out of the way too, mm-hmm. why do you think this fight is not getting made? Because I told you, Earl Spence is not his own boss. And PBC has to put up that money. So Terrence Crawford cannot make PBC put up the money because I agree with you that Earl Spence is the A-side. And with being the A-side, that means you control that negotiate. You sit out what you want. And then it's for yeah. it's for Terrence to say, yay or nay, I, I don't really want to do that. But the person who got the leverage is Earl. I agree with you guys. But he got to send the, the, the term sheet first. And get the negotiations going, and then they may be actually doing that much. But right. um, the contract, we don't know. But well, here's something that you got to understand mm-hmm. uh, with all due respect mm-hmm. they don't send the contracts until everything's basically agreed upon. Yeah, the term prior, to the, prior to the contracts, fans talk about the contract, but what they don't realize is that the fighters' representatives, their lawyers, and their managers. They meet and hash almost every single thing out before the PBC, before they say, okay, we're going to put it in writing now, and we're going to send you a formal contract. That The terms are pretty much agreed to prior to that ever happening. And what I'll tell you, because you inquire about what I know and what I might know, I, I knew a couple people a few years ago that used to work for HBO Boxing at the executive level. And... I didn't know them well, but through them, I met several professional fighters and they gave me some inside information and they they taught me and they learned me about a lot of the business in the boxing. And it's so different than what so many boxing fans really understand. They don't. They don't know. They don't understand how and why fights get made and why some fights get made and why some fights don't get made. A lot of fans, even even passionate fans, don't know why some fighters are popular and some fighters aren't popular, whether they're black, white, brown, Filipino, whether they're from Philadelphia or the Philippines. It doesn't matter. These boxing promoters, regardless of what people think, they don't care what color you're from. They don't care where you're from they only really care about what you sell and if you sell good it doesn't matter if you're from philly or the philippines now it's true that fighters who have a country behind them oftentimes are able to generate more revenue just like a tyson fury you see tyson fury has all of england behind him and he's got the irish gypsies and and he's made fans on his own too from being outlandish and and carrying on the way he does much the same way adrian broner did Uh, my my only thing with that jerry is that 
Tyson Fury really didn't make no money until him and Deontay Wilder got together. Both of them dudes on their own wasn't making a damn dime. But when they connected, they started making money. And then even on top of that, that's true. And it do and it do matter. It does matter about your race. Because even Floyd said, had I been a white fighter, I would have made a billion. We live in America. That's ain't nothing to be ashamed of. It's our dirty past collectively. It's our dirty past, you know. And I'm a historian, so I look at it like that, you guys. They don't they don't care about it. They do, they do. It's a factor, it factors in. You talk to a black woman, I'm gonna tell you right now. People will bite their nose off to spite their face, Jerry. And, and you'd be like shocked sometimes. But I'm telling you, just having lived in lived it myself, I don't have to be in a boxing world. I could just be in the world. And I can tell you, it does matter. Now, to your credit, it, it shouldn't stop no show. I get what you're saying about that. But it does factor in. If somebody don't want to give you something, they ain't going to give. Like, I've tried to buy cars. I got the money in the bank. You know, I got the check right in my hand. And these fools will still play that game that they play when they trying to sell a woman a car. I have to walk off the lot. Show this bitch. I won't buy your motherfucking shit. Somebody going to sell me the car. I won't. And you sell it to me like you sold it to that motherfucking dude over there. You're going to give me those, those prices because I got the money and I got the credit. So I have to walk away. Just to prove my you, point. You talk about so, capitulating. To me, that's capitulating. I'm talking about boxing and fight promoters. Fight promoters are businessmen. They have fighters from all over the world. All and they do play races, race cars. Different colors. They and do the play the race cars. And the most are the ones who bring the most money. And it doesn't they do to them what play the race are. car. Hence why, oh. hence why Keith Thurman is where he is. He has the complexion for the protection. Of the collection. Yes, he is, but he has a look that's more appeasing to the powers that be. I come on now, Jerry. We ain't got to go through that. We ain't got to go through through the history of America. We know how America is. We ain't, I ain't mad at you, Jerry. I ain't mad at nobody. I hope ain't nobody ain't mad at me. But I ain't gonna act like America ain't what it is. America well, is to me is the mecca of boxing. Right now, when I sold cars, mm -hmm. you came onto my lot. It didn't matter to me what, where, if what color you were. The only thing that mattered to me is if you had the credit to get it. Because I think I know who's buying it. Same, <laughs> no matter if it's a black person buying a car or a white person buying a car. My only <laughs> thing is you had to have the credit to get it. Because that's, Jerry, that's you, said. but you can't speak for all white folks. That's you, well, though. Well, I got you. It's safe to say a fight promoter is in the business of promoting fighters and making if money. If they was about if making Bob money, they would have made money with Mayweather. Make, if Bob was about making money, he would have saw. If Bob was about making money, he would have saw the value in Mayweather. How did Mayweather see it, but Bob didn't see it? He made a mistake with Mayweather. He didn't know that Mayweather. He made a mistake with Mike. He made a mistake with a couple of people. He made a mistake with fat ass Andy Ruiz. Well, he didn't make a mistake with Ray Leonard or George Foreman. That's a, that's back in the day because because uh, you know what? Because people seem to think that you only should fight white fighters if you're a black fighter or a Mexican fighter. That's those are the fights to make. Black fighters should start fighting each other, but like they did, as you recall, the good old days when they and it was it was a big to do. I think if you're a fighter, period. You put in that work, you get in that ring, you should be awarded and treated fairly. I don't give a care what race you come from, what set you claim, what religion. I don't care about none of that stuff. But unfortunately, I'm not that one that's in power and authority to exact that type of change. And there's some old heads left around. They are of their generation. They they feel the way they feel. I ain't going to dig no grave for Bob. Bob, I believe once you're in your 90s, you get a pass on a lot of shit in life, you know, because saying that you should be happy that God let you see 90. So I don't be mad at Bob. I'm saying he's set in his ways. I'm not going to change him. He is from his generation. He's no different, he's no different than Leonard Ellerby. Caleb Plant is a white fighter. He, he was a white champion. Was he popular? Caleb Plant? No, Caleb Plant be pillow-fisted. I like Caleb. Lomachenko had 400 amateur fights and he only lost one. He's a two-time Olympic gold medalist. A he only lost one. Champion, uh, he only lost. You watch boxing? And, and Lomachenko. Well, sorry, my answers. I know who he is, man. Popular fighter. 
Loma Chica lost two fights, by the way. But Loma Chica was afforded the ability. He lost to Salido, and he lost to Tio. But let me tell you something. I tell this story all the time. I looked up Loma Chico when they was talking that old nut shit about Loma Chico and Floyd Mayweather is, is you know, like Loma Chico could have gave Floyd a run for his money at this prime. I was like, get the fuck out of here. So it made me look into Loma Chico. This was years ago. I swear to God, I swear, I swear that when I looked up Loma Chico, that shit said his net worth was $25 million. And if you look up Earl and Bud, it'll say that they respectively are worth $8 million. So I'm thinking nowadays, they be hiding people's wealth, which I don't blame folks because I wouldn't want nobody to know my net worth neither. But back in the day, they say he was worth $25 million. Yeah, Lomachenko never fought on pay-per-view, even to this day. Lomachenko makes money. He's rich beyond his ears. So I'm just saying, you know, they afford him dollar guarantee that's what he they, well shit well i i can't i can, I can only tell you what i saw i can only tell you what i saw with the race stuff and with the promoters with the race and listen you, you can walk know. through this world and have your experience jerry and I'm, I'm assuming that you're a white guy i'm assuming you can correct me if i'm wrong i'm a black woman that walked through america and i'm telling you i can tell you from my experience i won't have I won't look at it through the prism of your eyes and I won't have the same experience that you have. I genuinely have my experience. I know it's there. Now, all the racism for all the hoopla and all this stuff, it don't stop me. I'm going to go out and do what I'm going to do. I'm sure both feel the same way. I'm sure everybody in the chat feel the same way. We're not going to stop doing what we're doing, but what we can't do is act like that shit ain't here. It's an albatross hanging over the neck of motherfucking America and it ain't never going away. Not in our lifetime. I mean, that's a broader, broader discussion. I'm talking about fights, fight promoters, and how they handle business. And in my experience, from an intimate level, is that they don't care. They only care about what you sell. This is why Adrian Broner got as much push as he did, because he was outlandish and he was popular. Ray Leonard was a good-looking guy. He was an Olympic gold medalist, and people loved Ray Leonard. He's one of my favorite, all-time favorites, probably my number one favorite fighter. And Ray Leonard was very popular, not to mention he was a great fighter, too. So, But if you compare Ray Leonard to Marvin Hagler, who was also a great fighter, a blue collar type of guy, but Marvin was a, 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 a bit of an introvert, like you spoke about. He wasn't, he wasn't as good looking as Ray, and he, he, he didn't have a gold medal, of course, you know, and he simply was never as popular as Ray, but he was a great, great fighter. Thomas Hearns is in the middle there, right? Tommy was more popular than Marvin, but he was never as popular as Ray, now, although he was as great as Ray was, and that's how it goes in boxing, and the promoters they invest in the fighters that sell the tickets and it don't matter if you're black it don't matter if you're white it don't matter if you're from the philippines or if you're from uh, uh, uh guam they're interested in the fighters that sell that and, and it only makes sense that they would be because that's how they make money if bob aram was some type of racist why would he sign he is a racist you know he why is would he, why would he know he is he can't form but you know he is i'm not saying he could plus claim I'm not saying he's the grand wizard, but you know he is. He has a superiority complex. I could tell me he don't. He came up in that time. See the telltale signs. I'm not, I don't have a heaven or hell to put him in. And I'm not like saying, oh, I hate him because he's such a racist. He is, man. It is what it is. He is. He has a little bit of that in him. Well, let me speak about this. When Floyd Mayweather fought for Bob Arum, he was pretty boy Floyd. That's what that's what they called him, right? Now you had Oscar, who was the big star there at the time and making millions and millions of dollars. He was the golden boy. They called him the golden boy because because he won a gold medal. And Oscar was a good looking guy. He would give interviews and he would smiling real bright and so was Floyd and saying, saying all the right things. Well, Bob Arum tried to promote Mayweather the same way. Mayweather was a good-looking guy, and if you notice back then, when Mayweather was pretty boy, at, when he would give ring interviews, he'd be smiling real bright, and he'd Beautiful. be uh, talking good about his opponents and, and saying all the right things. 
And I know this because of what I was told by the HBO exec, and I've heard Bob Aaron speak on this. He, Mayweather wasn't reaching the level of popularity that Oscar was. Oscar had that Mexican-American fan base. It was just a bigger fan base. And while Floyd was every bit as good, even better than Oscar, he wasn't reaching the same level of popularity. Now, Aaron would have loved for Mayweather to be making checks the way Dale Hoy was, because that's more money in his pocket. He would have loved for that to happen. But the way he was promoting him, he didn't realize that Mayweather was willing to basically do what a lot of fighters aren't willing to do, which is to sell out. And Mayweather sold out and made himself a hated athlete. He made himself a spoiled athlete, throwing money around in people's faces faces and playing a sport athlete and he got his he got his money by doing that by beating Oscar De La Hoya that got him a bunch of popularity and then he turned his whole game around instead of being pretty boy flashing the bright smile and saying all the right things he became a sport athlete and, and and basically you know not doing those things and he and, and as a result of doing that Every time he'd have a press conference, I remember when he fought Ricky Hatton, they had the press conference in Vegas. There was like 11,000 people there, and you couldn't find a Mayweather fan in the whole place. They was booing him like crazy. And he even, I could tell it got to him because I seen Floyd in the interview afterwards say, you know, I just want Americans to root for me. But see, it's just like in wrestling. When you turn heel, it's difficult to go back. Mayweather had already turned heel. He made a lot of people dislike him because of that. And, but, in the end, it made him a warehouse full of money. So here's, so here's, really, the thing, the Jerry, here's the thing, Jerry. Um, I'm, I'm bleeding over into time. I don't normally be on here. I do want to say I appreciate that you cunt, that you came through. I think you're a bigger man than you let know. Uh, what you did say is you don't think a contract was sent. <laughs> so together, uh, Jerry, let's say this to Guetta. Hey, all y'all people that saying a contract was sent, y'all full of shit. Come on, Jerry, say it with me. They full of shit, right? Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Only thing I can come on, you Jerry. Is they send the contract at the very end. Yes, I mean, yes, we get it. We we got time. we got they the like term the sheet. We understand what term sheet mean and the negotiation back and forth. What we're saying is, people have come out and said like it's a fact. They also okay. come out and say it's a fact that that uh, Bud asked for twenty million dollars. Now that's crazy because you won't say what Earl asked for. Well, if Earl asked for 30 or 25, I can see why Bud would ask for 20. I mean, but I'm just saying, sometimes you got to be on here and squash certain narratives. We may see well, things differently, uh, Jerry, because man, you walk different paths in life, you know. But, but you know yourself, if you care, if you listen to boxing fans, 90% of boxing fans, no matter how well intended they are or how passionate, they don't know about the sport of boxing. And then they speak out of, out of turn a lot of times. Anyone that says that the contract was sent without knowing that it was, I mean, it's bullshit. We don't know if they sent the contract or not. I just know that in those negotiations, the contract is the final thing. I mean, everything's pretty much agreed to by the time they pay the lawyers to write up that contract. They've pretty much agreed to the terms already. That's the business one on one, right? That's the I mean, no matter what business you talking, you're gonna keep going to your lawyer and say, write up a contract. He ain't like that one, write up another one. You ain't never gonna do that. You're gonna do terms. No, they don't do it like that. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. They they pretty much are fundamentally agree on everything. And then at the very end, and right before, you know, the, it's about to go down, that's when the contractors get sent and they put the ink to paper. That happens at the very end. The Where they're at right now is they're negotiating. And the problem is, is PBC is not offering Bud Crawford the money that he thinks he deserves to get. And and what I'm in no position to tell that man what money he he should get. And that's what we can't tell nobody. If we're gonna suggest anything about money, we should be suggesting that they get paid more. I have been on here for months advocating that PBC you need to pay Errol Spence more. You do. There's no reason why he should get a guaranteed 1.5. He should be getting 10 million at least. You should. Y'all say he the big fish. Say he the heavy lifter. Well, see, that's the thing, and that's just what fans don't know. Fans don't know the economics of the fight, but the people at PBC and these top promoters, they do know the economics. So he ain't worth it. And they go on the projections that their people tell them as to what kind of money is involved. So they saying Earl Spence ain't worth it. 
but I don't know that they're saying necessarily. They ain't paying that. it. So they saying it. Not. Here's the thing. When they think they can stage the fight, pay the fighters and pay the expenses, get their money back and make a reasonable profit, that's when the fights get made. No different than you would invest your money. You wouldn't buy a house to fix up if you knew that you're not going to get that money back. You're not going to do it. And this is tough for boxing fans because we're, we, we're concerned about the sport. We want to see the matchups. We want to see the, the sport. We're not concerned about the business, but the business is what dictates um, what fights get made. You see what I mean? And that's a very hard pill for fight fans to understand. It took me a while to understand until I had some help from some people who really showed me why these fights get made when they get made. And it's perfectly, I'm a Well, this is, this is when I be saying the complexion for the protection, Jerry. You ain't, they didn't make that money back. I keep saying you like you're a part of PBC. They didn't make their money back from Canelo. I don't give a fuck what they say. They didn't make well, their money back. That. They didn't, but they paid them. They like paid them all that goddamn money. Well, then, if they didn't make that money back, and we're talking about millions of dollars, mm -hmm. people with that type of money are not stupid people. They don't throw money around carelessly. They don't get rich like that by throwing money around carelessly. After he fought Plant and they paid him $52 million, they turned right around and offered him $100 million for two more. Because bucks. they now, like now, him. why would they do that? They, because they like him and they do shit like that. I, again, like I said, you can't so fathom, them, you so cannot them fathom that. that. Yes, yes, yes. They would no. do it. I tell you, better go by what Floyd said. He said, if I was white, I'd be a billionaire. Floyd also said, Bob didn't know how to promote me he only know he only wanted to promote me in one area. He didn't know how to promote me as a black fighter. Bob and his people have come out and said NBF policies. So he can't if race was already out there. Do I think he should be arrested? And he's a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. I'm not saying any of that. But Bob has a habit of devaluing black people, black his okay, black well, fighters. Well, well, since you think that, let me ask you this: Devin Haney, Devin Haney fought in Vegas. Two fights ago. That's his adopted hometown. He sold 4,000 tickets in that fight. Dazen did nothing to protect or re sign Devin Haney in this Cambosis uh, negotiation. But who did? Bob Aram. Bob um, no, nah, we're not going we to take it like that. Devin Haney had to make a, a deal with the devil. He had to make a, he had to make a deal with the devil. He got Devin Haney the title shot for Unified. He had to make a deal with the devil. Because Cambosos is not, I repeat, not worth ten million dollars, and you know that. Well, well, when you can pack sixty thousand people into a stadium, he didn't pack sixty. He nearly line. packed forty. He didn't pack sixty, and it was a it's a big ass stadium. He said he was gonna do eighty. So that's when when somebody said that earlier. Thousand people in that stadium, and the fight was pay per view over there. He didn't pack it. But my point is this. Bob Arum, when Dazen did nothing to protect Devin Haney, Bob Arum went in there and signed him to a multi-fight deal, got him the shot that he wanted. And Devin Haney, I've seen him in an interview two weeks ago. He said he's never been happier. He's never had more exposure. And he's is it two Bob's? He is it two Bob's favor? You trying to act like Bob just did a solid for somebody? Bob got something off the deal too. He got he got Devin for three fights. Now, so yes, the next fight that Devin fight, fight, hold on, in the next fight that Devin fight, if if uh Cambosos don't activate the um the mandatory, which I hear he did, I don't know for sure, but if he don't activate it, then Bob got him for two fights as an undisputed champion. He can fight anybody, and that's gonna make money or whatever. So Bob Bob getting some out the deal uh -huh, too. Uh -huh. Devin Haney is the one who got the short end of the stick. He got two million. Cambosos uh -huh. got ten. Anybody and it's going to make money. Absolutely. I, I didn't say it's going to make money. I say he can fight anybody. I'm basically saying he can fight anybody, and Bob is going to make some money off it because Bob is not going to pay him much. Devin Haney got paid two million dollars out this deal, less than when he was getting with the zone. Devin Haney uh, had to dance with the devil to get to where he wanted to get. He made the sacrifice. George well, Cambosos have Haney? no he business. George Cambosos have no business on earth earning no damn ten million dollars. Cut the shit. No, he do not need. No, he does not have it in his resume or whatever. Here's a, here's a simple 
concept that you got to understand. In boxing, as in life, you get in where you fit in. Nobody gives people millions of dollars. PBC does not give Canelo, Canelo tens of millions of dollars because they like him. That's horseshit. George Cambosis didn't get $10 million because somebody just decided, oh, I feel like giving this guy millions of dollars of my money. It Dang just worth it. doesn't work that way. Dang he worth it, Jerry. You can say whatever you want. 60, Come on, man. Stadium he and did not. Stop lying. Stop, Stop lying. He said 80000 he put in less than 40. Stop the line. And he is and not worth 10 million. That that it was 57, he, people between him and Devin, to him, between him and Devin, George Cambosos is not worth $10 million. Well, it's just you know, not. It's not up to you to decide that. The people right, it's not up to me to decide. The That's why I told you sometimes people, people can bite their nose off. Happened. Despite their they face, that and that's worth why I told you complexion for the protection, and that's why I told you complexion for the protection, and bite your nose off despite your face. These things do happen. We talk, no. yeah, it was in Australia, but you was dealing with a lot of Americans. I'm just saying, Clear. uh, Clear. Lou DeBella, Bob Aaron, those are that's true, that's not a lie. I mean, but those are the main players in this whole deal. Here's a simple thing. You get in where you fit in. People don't give millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, with your complexion like that, you, you can get in where you fit in. <laughs> you can. I, I'm not a racist, Jerry. I want you to know that it ain't got nothing to real do big. And I don't think you are line. neither. But but I'm in. I'm saying to you, I, I walk this earth. I did this earth. Uh, uh, and I've been in America. And I'm going to tell you right now, it, it does... Some things it does matter. It don't mean you stop trying. It don't mean that you don't try to make it better or try to move away from those type things. And Bosos, as he has the fortunate enough uh, opportunity to be who he is, and because uh, we didn't know who the fuck he was until he fought Tia, we ain't never heard of him. But somehow yeah. another he a ten million fighter. But Earl Spence can't get ten million dollars a fight. Y'all can miss me with that. But but Jerry. I do appreciate you being here. I'm going to give Bo some, his last statement. If he, Bo, if you want to ask Jerry something, but yeah, we had three hours, so I got to I gotta uh, close it down. But Bo, are you still with us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. You, 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 you got any last, uh, last things you want to say? Do you want to say anything lastly to Jerry? And then, Jerry, I'm going to let you close it out, too. Um, I just said, you know, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, another good show, good um topics and stuff like that. Uh, nice little debate earlier, you know, with whoever you know the, the Earl Spence fan dude was. But Gerald. thank you, Gerald, for coming in. Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I just want you know, it, it's just to the point. Like I've been wanting to see this fight for like. Go ahead, Bo. I just, you know, I've been wanting to see this fight for the past four years. I'm, I'm at the point that I'm just kind of getting disinterested in it because of, because of the politics, really. You know hey. what I'm saying? Like this fight should have happened years ago. I think we're on the same page with that. Yeah. What I want to know is who do y'all think will win the fight between Spence and Crawford? I got Bud. Yeah, I got, I got Crawford winning the fight, but to me, it just seemed like. Now that this fight been delayed so long and Crawford's in his mid-30s and starting the fight starting to look more even now, but I still got Bud winning. I don't think it's... I, I, I just... I look at the whole landscape and I just see the holes. I see the omissions. You know, um, as I told you guys, I, this don't make me Barbara Badass, but I used to do... I used to be an analyst for a living. Um... And I did it for the military, so, you know. I can let y'all mind wonder about that, but um, I just I'm used to looking at things and what what we don't see and what we do see, and and paying attention to detail as bold. I know you are too, and bold are both uh, retired Navy, and uh, I'm just saying though, you know, some things that people be saying and doing that just don't make sense. Like you know, I, I give the example of the. $20 million that Buzz supposedly had asked for, I just use it as an example. So everybody get up in the arms and get all upset and 
Be like, how dare he? He pricing himself out. But you don't never say what Earl asked for. So how can anybody make an assessment on that situation if you don't know the other side? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, that's all I be saying. I, I don't I don't come here to beat down Earl or, or whatever, even though I, I think Bud is a better fighter. I they're just be fighters. like, hmm? They're, they're, they're great fighters, both of them. Yeah, they both. The I think Bud is a better fighter. I think he's more of a pure boxer. He has more just. I could go through all that, but I don't hate Earl. I just don't like lies, and I don't like innuendos. I don't like shit starters. I don't like um, people who omit shit because anybody who got children out there, if your child comes up to you and don't tell you the whole story, what you'll say? They lied, right? So an omission, a lie by any other name is still a lie. And that's a lot of shit yeah, like that know, going on. You know, that's what happens too, though, when a fight is held up like this. Um, the fans uh, start, start to capitulate. And there was a ton of that with Manny and Floyd, you know, and all the time that it took to make that fight. Uh, it happened with Leonard and Hagler back in the day, I remember. And that's something I don't pay a whole lot of attention to because fans, you know, we're the ones left to sit here and debate and fuss and argue about, you know, this and that. And some people will take it a step further and make shit up. You know, I don't pay too much attention to it. I, I'm like your partner there. I'm a, I'm a, I'm tired of talking about it. You know, it's time to either make the fight or move on. Uh, I've been back and forth about who I think would win. I mean, at first I favored Spence because Spence is uh, a big, strong welterweight. He's one of the biggest welterweights I've ever seen. And he's got a uh, great overall body strength and he's able to walk his opponents down and, and beat them up. Now I see Crawford as a more versatile fighter. Um, he's not, the slickest boxer I've ever seen, though, because Bud will get hit, but he's just a genuine badass, and that's what I like about Crawford. He, he's he got a, a, a mean streak in him that you can see, but Spence is a badass, too. He, he He's a badass. He just he, he, he doesn't wear it on his sleeve as much, I think, as Crawford does. Crawford, he kind of has a chip on his shoulder, and, and when he fights, you can tell that he doesn't just want to beat his opponent. He wants to beat his ass. And uh, and with the way Spence fights, you know, Spence is going to come forward and he's going to look to come forward, walk Bud down and whack on him. And Bud Crawford ain't going to take to that. I know he's not going to take he ain't but, gonna but take but kindly to that. That's the so whole one point. good thing about the fight that I see. And, you know, if you're a fight fans, you know how many times we waited for a fight like Manny and Floyd. And there's several others. And we highly anticipated the fight. And then the fight turned out to be bullshit. I don't think that'll happen with these two. If they ever get this fight made, I think it'll be a classic. Me too. I hope so, Jerry. From your lips, the guy's ears, to the powers that be that make this thing happen, <laughs> I hope it'll be a classic. Um, and and, and put on a classic, it might really make that fight as big as what it should be. Because the fight ain't not, it's not, the reason it's not big isn't because these two aren't good. They're great fighters. The fight's not that big because, let's be honest, boxing is not big in the United States. There is no big stars in the United States but outside of Canelo, and that's because of his Mexican fan base. But the next biggest guy Jerry, you got here is who? We got to stop Jackson. saying it, Jerry. We don't have to stop saying that. We understand that boxing has taken a hit, but a lot of them boxers get paid a lot of money. We also can say sanctioning bodies aren't nonprofits. They're corporations or for profit, too. We they can say that happen. because they lying about that just so they don't pay Uncle Sam. Hell, I got to pay Uncle Sam. Everybody in the check got to pay un Uncle Sam. Bo got to pay Uncle Sam. God damn it, Mauricio Suleiman, you should pay Uncle Sam too. But I'm just saying, we got a lot of stuff that can be changed in boxing. But we got to take it one day at a time. We got to keep pushing forward. and We got to keep making it better. We can make boxing fine if the people who ain't fighting get the fuck out the way. We don't want to see Bob Arum in the ring. We don't want to see Al Heyman in the ring. We don't want to see uh, Eddie Hearn or Mayweather. I mean, these are the people that are promoting or Oscar. Fuck y'all. Let's put the emphasis in the camera on the actual fighter. Let it get I back to that shit. They've always had fight promoters. They've always been around. Yeah, but, around but, but it's Leonard too much. And and the Hearns era. But okay, you talking about before Bob. technology, Jerry. With with technology being what it is, with the social media and shit, 
You you would think I'm paying to come see Bob fight or throw some hands. I'm not paying to see Bob. Get out the way. Promote the fight. Bob. Sit on the side. Shut the hell up. That's what I want. Yeah, but uh, you got to understand, bo- boxing's always had promoters. They, 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 they've always been a part of boxing. The reason boxing is in the position that it's in right now, and I know this for a fact, is because back when Hearns and Hagler was fighting, there was one network that was airing the fights. There was no exclusive network deals. So fighters were signed to promoters back then. Don King, Bob Arum, they were the main players. Fighters had promoters just like they do now, but they weren't signed to exclusive uh, but they network wasn't deals. Or and, and when or these fighters, the fighter. like the big fighters like we're talking about, they're oftentimes almost Every time they're exclu- they're assigned to these exclusive network deals, and that is what gets in the way of the fights getting made more so than they, the promoters. But they also else. it's a combination. Jerry. We can go on and on. That's that's for another show. Cause you say sanctioned bodies be having some kind of control over what we get to see, what we want. Well, of course, but they've always been there. Yeah, but they the but again, you're, you're missing the point. That back then they wasn't they wasn't as emphasized as they are today. That's the problem. We need them to go back to the level that they were back in the day, and and elevate the fighters more than the people that do the business behind the scenes. We don't care for them. They didn't do nothing exciting that we want to see. You know what I'm They've saying? Always been there. I know they always gonna keep always saying that, there. and they gonna always be there. But you can change is elevating the fighters more so and letting them have a say. Who's? I mean, they running this shit like a slave plantation, and they need to stop. They are, Jerry. I'm sorry, but they are. The fighters work for them, or they work for the fighter. It should be they work for the fighter. Well, it's not that way. It's never been that way. They work for the promoters and they work for the networks. That's how it is, and that's how it's always been. The only thing that's different is back then, it was Wild World of Sports. It was one network. So here's a good example. Dazen has Canelo, right? Dazen has him signed to an exclusive deal. Do you know the type of money it would take for them to cross-promote a fight with, say, Showtime? That happens almost next to never. It's only happened a couple of times in the history of boxing, not because of the fighters, not because of the sanctioning bodies or the promoters, but because of the exclusive network deals. Now, Canelo has major endorsement deals, right? And when he fights, his endorsers are on the ring apron. They're on the ring post. This is millions and millions of dollars of revenue. If he fights on Showtime, they have different uh, endorsers that they endorse and it becomes extremely complicated to the point where it's so complicated that they don't even bother doing it. It didn't used to be that way. It well, Jerry, hold on. Let me interject. I will say this because I do got to go. It's after three hours and I do appreciate you in here, but I will say any fighters listening to this then do what Fred Hawthorne said from Barbershop Conversation. It We got social media, y'all. Put your own fight card together and go from there and see where it takes you. I mean, if you think about it, uh, what's, his, what's that boy named Soldier Boy? He didn't do a traditional way of making his music and became a millionaire, didn't he? Because he went through social media and all that stuff. So it's out there for everybody. You can digitally put on your own yeah, boxing, you whatever. One guy, uh, the, the Paul, Jake Paul, that's what you see him do. I mean, Jake yeah, Paul, well, if he's doing he's it, then take it. Then take a page from Jake Paul's uh uh book. Earl Spence, you are a millionaire. You can put your own shit together. You got to, you know, but everybody want to be attached to it. I'm just saying I need the plantation to be gone. I thought the plantation went away in 1865, but here in boxing in America, the plantation live and well. I need it to be gone. The, the uh Everybody works for the boxer, not the other way around. That's what I need. That's what I want to see. I'm gonna continue to watch boxing. I'm gonna continue to be a fan, but that's what I want to see. And I and Uncle Sam, you take my taxes all the time. I need you to rip so through you, everybody taxes. When you see when you see a Tank Davis mm-hmm. selling out arenas and and selling pay per view and popular, where's the plantation mentality stopping him? The plantation because he's not doing what's good for his career. 
See, you notice I didn't say one person. I didn't say one person. A lot of people got this plantation mentality. Tank Davis should have been trying to go for, uh, like I said before, and I've said it on my program before. I know you haven't heard it, Jerry, but I've said Tank Davis could have wiped out the 130, 135, and 140. That's better for him than every, just going for the money fight all the time. That's better for him in the long run. And when you get to the end of your career like Floyd did when he signed that six-fight uh, deal with Showtime or even in his last three fights, Floyd deserved to coast. He'd been doing it forever. He deserved to coast and, and pick the fighters he wanted to for whatever reason. He ain't had nothing else to prove. Tank Davis is not, you know, the motherfucker could be undisputed. He's that good. But look how they well, moving him. Because they're giving us fights that they want, not what we want. Now, that's a plantation well, mentality. True, but that's another thing that boxing fans don't understand. These fighters, that the ones that we're talking about, that make it to that level where they make life-changing money, they make up for less than 10% of professional fighters. 90% of professional fighters never make this type of money. But the ones that do, Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, any, any of them guys, once they get there, it's all about the money. They're no different than the promoters at that point. But this, they don't care that about who they want to see them fight. They go. They want to fight. Who? If, uh, Bob Aaron said that Terrence Crawford never once asked for the Earl Spence fight. He said that Terrence yeah. said, "Get me the you fight that pays the most money." You believe that shit? Blame him. I you believe blame that? Him for that? Because I heard, I heard, and saw out his own mouth that he asked for the fight. So Bob can miss me with that. But, but Jerry. It has been nice. I mean, I think you're a more important man than you let on. No, I <laughs> yes, I you are. a couple guys that work for uh, <laughs> HBO Boxing at the executive level. Well, uh, I'm, I appreciate long. that you called in. I'm very honored that you called in. We can debate. You know, as you see, I won't hold my tongue. Tell all your friends to come over here and hit that like and subscribe button. All of y'all that's watching, hit that like and subscribe button. Don't cost you a thing. If you haven't subscribed already, if you have, we already got you locked locked in. Jerry, you hit my like and subscribe button. Yes, I did. All right, did. Jerry, I feel you. Don't be a stranger. I like talking I to you. Back some time. I appreciate you giving me all the time, and it was good, good debating with you. Good debating with you, as you like. I said, don't take it personal, Jerry. I'm a pleasant person. Oh, no. I'm a nice person. Um, okay, but I won't you hold my that. tongue. A strong black woman, Jerry. Oh, <laughs> Alright, all right, Jerry, thanks for coming through Bo, thanks for coming through uh, Thanks for coming through Ronald, thanks for hanging in there I saw everything you put up there Exactly about Boxman Cox, uh, TV That's why boxers get their criticism Because they're not following their own rules They're following the idols That's not legendary But Devin Haney can get a pay-per-view from me now Exactly, exactly And that's what I was saying You can't it's no time like the present. Like, like for instance, I'm going to give y'all an example. I always do a water check. And a lot of y'all could be like, why the fuck do you do a water check right in the mid, in the beginning of the show? Who cares, Miss T? Who care about water? Water ain't popular. But you know what? Adults, kids, we all like structure. And I say water check because I want America, my beautiful country, to change its mindset and go back to doing what they know is best. It was a time when we all thought it was important to drink water. Remember when you was a kid and your uh, and your mom said, or you'd be like, Mom, I'm thirsty. Can I get some Kool-Aid? She said, get some water. I used to be mad as a bitch. Water was her answer to everything. You know what? Water was the answer. And we don't drink enough of it. So that was one of the questions that somebody asked me. Why do I always leave with the water check? Because it's important. And I want my beautiful country and its beautiful people to be some water drinkers because this world is getting away from that. And then that, that will probably make you think twice before you want to run a pipeline through 20% of your fresh water. You know how many ecosystems survive off of that? You know how many farmers need that fresh water to plant their crops that they turn around and sell to you in the stores? I want y'all to think about that. Drink water, drink water. The other question was, uh, wait a minute, let me see. Oh, Ronald Finkley said, strong, that's right. Strong black woman. <laughs> he said, drink water, stretch life, live, uh, your life, work hard, invest correctly. Exactly. Uh, question, the other question was, 
why is filtering system uh why is the filtering system important for your overall health i'm gonna try to get through this real quick so this person must have been watching my other shows that i do on sunday they they out there you know there's the same icon boxing fans talk tv but it has an apple as the icon or whatever i'm talking about health and stuff hey uh, miss okay. miss me before yes. before you uh before you uh go on there, i'm just let you know i'm uh i'm a hop off and whatnot okay gotta get get ready for work tomorrow but um good show thank you and whatnot uh you, are you doing another one tomorrow yeah i'll do it every day unless okay. uh my internet they've been putting out tables under the grounds out here so our internet was jacked up but um Oh, you know, okay. It should be unless the cable or the internet is not working, or you know, I got caught up. I do a show Monday through Friday, seven thirty. Yeah, I need, I need I need to start doing lives, but I guess apparently you got to have a webcam to do that, right? Yeah, you sh well, you could. Yeah, yeah, I think you do need a webcam. Yeah, it don't I, cost I don't... that much. They like 40, 40 bucks for a good one. Yeah, because I, I got a, I got a gaming laptop, but you know those don't come with webcams, so I gotta um go ahead and buy me a camera. Yeah, you can get one. It's easy. It's like go on Amazon and get, get you one of those cameras that you can put on the top and plug into into your laptop. Make sure you got the because when you, when you start doing live, you're gonna find that um, me personally, I like the desktop better. Some people do it with that laptop, but you're gonna have to start plugging in a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? It depends. Yeah. But, you know, if you got any questions, man, you see my email up there. You can email me at any time. We'll build anything I can help you with. No, you know, no problem. No problem. All right. But thank you for coming in. Thank you, Gerald Cross, for coming in. Thank you, Hey, for dropping in. Thank you, Jared, for dropping in. I actually think I know who he is, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to say. <laughs> Do you think you know who he is, Bo? Yeah. I, well, he was on Coach Malachi's show a while back, and you know, I, I guess this guy's at a stream, uh, Bob Arum, uh, guy, whatever. <laughs> you can't say anything wrong about Bob Arum, especially with this old Crawford situation. You know what I'm saying? So I know he was, he was, he was, you know, calling the show, to defending Bob Arum from, <laughs> from I, so, but, I yeah. he, he said something that made me say, Oh, I know exactly who you are because I'm listening to how his dialect is and everything. But he don't want to be known, so I ain't gonna say nothing. I could be wrong, but I'm just not. You know, I I respect everybody's privacy. Yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. Um, but yeah, but thanks for having me on. So I definitely hop on tomorrow or whatnot. Okay, okay. I appreciate everybody who came in. But I'm a, I always say I'm gonna answer the questions that people um ask me. Uh, thanks, Bo, for coming through. Um, the question was some about the uh filtering system and i'm gonna say it real quick you obviously watching my my sunday shows or you caught an episode or two filtering systems are important you have about three or four of them and you might have more than that in your body you're talking to kidneys the spleen the gallbladder and most importantly the liver so you know the liver is where a lot of magic happens a lot of people like to think that they get in shape and they do everything is predicated off of what they do in the gym no um if you have a body who don't don't create metabolism. You ain't gonna be able to do shit. I don't care what you do in the gym. But I don't wish that on you because I don't want you to find out that the hard way. But I just take it from somebody who's been through it. You can exercise 23 hours a day. If you don't create metabolism in your body, you will not get in shape. You will not look at you won't just won't. So why is it important? Is because when you come when you talk about the main, the main filtering system, which is the liver, um, when you release T4 from your body and it's in your body registered that it's all in your system and shit, that helps you live. That's one job it does. You cannot live without that existence, without that presence of T4 in your body. Secondly, T4 comes in a cover-coated shell and um, is, is done that way so it can journey through different parts of your body like the small intestines and not get burned up and disintegrated. Um, but it makes its way to the liver. Now, the T4 at the liver or most filter places is when conversions happen. And um, T4 and its, and its state that is being released does nothing but let the body know you have adequate amount in there. So therefore, your body is going to stay alive. 
That's all it does. And that is very important because you want to be alive, right? But T4 in another state, in a converted state, which the liver does, is T3, which means it's usable. Rule of thumb, not an absolute. Whenever you hear three, that's a usable thing. You can hear D2, D3, you know, different stuff. But when you hear three, it's probably saying that it's usable, whatever that something is. But T4 is converted into metabolism in order for it to be absorbed into the body, into the cell, so that you can so it can do its other job. But filtering, whenever you eat something that you cannot digest, first and foremost, everything you eat turns to sugar. And eventually it can turn to fat. But if you cannot digest or consume or use the thing that you ate, then all you did was make sugar and make fat, right? Uh, the T4, T4, like I said, and it come there and it's going to combat against all this unusable shit that you got. If the shit don't make its way to the colon and then out your body, then some kind of way you got to burn it off. And that's hence the gym. See, it's always different alternatives to do the same job or arrive at the same conclusion. And so when the T4 gets there, it's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's knocking on the door. I'm ready. I'm ready to convert to T3 so you can use me. And the filtering system, the liver, if they spend all day trying to filter, they'll never get around to converting T4 to T3. They'll never, in other words, get around to making metabolism. Because they're going to filter first. And then they're going to do metabolism. So if your body takes 23 hours to filter, then you messed up. You know what I'm saying? That means you ate Everything you keep eating, you making them take a long time to filter through. And they filter, they sifting through, filtering, sifting through to find out what's usable and what's not. And that's all the liver, spleen, all blood, you know, other filtering places they do. Sift through to find what's usable and what's not. The longer you make them sift through, then the less time you'll, you'll let them you know, convert stuff to usable things. That's And that's why filtering is important. What you want your body to do is be in a filtering state for maybe ops, four hours out the whole day. And then it can spend the other 20 metabolizing. Don't we love metabolism? Metabolism makes you smaller, makes you fit. <laughs> it does a lot for you socially. Um. It's getting late. I caught the last hour, though. Okay, I feel you, Ronald. Very tasking, Ronald. You need uh, the white boy to tell you what's going on because you are delusional. <laughs> Lord, I calm down with the language now. But that was the question that they asked. I get more into it on Sunday. I appreciate you watching a Sunday show because I haven't done a show in a while, so that means you either just watched it recently and went back and watched it. So thank you for the question. Again, anybody who has any questions, I can be reached at boxingfanstalk at gmail.com. Y'all know that I be on this Find the Health in You, this health stuff. We can talk about that. Send me a question. I answer it it's most time at the beginning of the show. I come on Monday through Friday, um, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please hit the like, share, and um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. If you have, you already locked in. Um, you know, and if you watch me in replay, leave a comment. I am open minded. I do listen, but T will always be T. So, in light of all of that, thank y'all, everybody who came through. Uh, Jerry, shout out to you. I, I think, like I said, I think you wanted what, what you say, but it's all good, player. Anyway, thank you for coming through and uh, gracing us with your presence. And y'all know when you know more, you do better, right? You know better, you do better. So, peace until tomorrow.